Mr. Josh, how was your last week? The majority of it was spent in a NyQuil-induced coma. All right. NyQuil. Uh, you know, NyQuil to me... <laughs> that was like, my I, week. <laughs> that was your whole week. Uh, I mean, almost, right? Because you pretty much spent yeah. most of it out, like, actually asleep. Yes. When you're not at work. Yeah, went to work, come home, take NyQuil, sleep, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse. How's the, okay. the, 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 I guess... Yeah, I think I'm on the tail end of it. Okay, good. Good, yeah. good, good. Not about it though, right? Any games at all? Or no. pretty much just sleeping, right? No games. No games. No. No none. games. All right, not all right. at all. Anything relevant? Um, I did played... you you didn't get sick at least? No, I have. I'm not sick. Okay. Uh, good. I did have allergies though. That was crazy. Um, but uh, I played Destiny two some more, and then I watched a lot of Netflix this week. Netflix. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> I if too. we're talking about the same stream. Netflix. Service. Hey, it could. Hey, I don't. I'm not here to judge. Okay, it could have been that. It could have been, but it wasn't. But it, it wasn't. wasn't. This will be the quickest weekly wrap of it. I right? feel like it's gonna be. <laughs> it is. Uh, I can't which, think of anything else related that I did game wise. Yeah, it's been a very. very yeah, my week. my week's been pretty busy. Uh, other than work, I. I did think of something today that I really wanted because Jim Sterling's been streaming Sleeping Dogs, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. Switch port. I didn't even think about that for like a while because I was like, I wanted Yakuza mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. But like at the moment, I've been really wanting to play Sleeping Dogs again for like a fourth time. Mm-hmm. And like, what better way? Because the Switch is the perfect console to just like make you replay everything. Like the yeah. port on I- I- uh, Alien Isolation that mm-hmm. came out recently is fantastic. Like, I don't even know how to make Like, there are some parts of it where they balance like. Element particles and HDR and stuff like that, and remove jet, like kind of like The Witcher, but with less graphical sacrifice of removing the right things. And it honestly looks like better coloration and better um, sh- uh, shadow effect mm-hmm. sometimes than even the PS4 version. Sometimes, uh-huh. now granted, it did come out a while back, and you know, like it's not really too fair to compare something that came out halfway through the PS4's lifespan to. Switch, which just came out a couple you know, years ago and mm-hmm. it just dropped now because uh, they had lots of time to clean it up and everything. But it's one of the company's uh, first takes on uh, Switch porting, which is great because that I forgot their name, so forgive me if I meant to plug them or whatever. I'll link it below, but which I'll probably forget because I got pointed out that I forgot that last time to link something. Um, but uh, they did a very good job. The only other game they did was like Grid Autosport, but I didn't play that because... I don't know. That's probably one of the few games I'm not really too interested in. I don't play many racing games to begin with, and mm-hmm. then on top of that, uh, the Switch is not the thing I think of when I think of playing auto-realistic sports or whatever. Like, maybe, I don't know, our, I just, maybe like arcade Maybe style, arcade but, style. Need for some, yeah. some, good, some of the good Need for Speeds or something on there, Burnout. Would, yeah. yeah, that'd be more fun on the Switch, I think. Not so much yeah, I would sim see stuff. See it kind of weird seeing like something car PG on the Switch. Basically, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I, thought, I had that thought. Um... <clears throat> Bought Pokemon, played about five minutes of it, and oh. then stopped. Only because I've been, I've been, I've been breaking my promise of trying to beat games before I buy games. Mm-hmm. So the game season's been kind of heavy, at least for what I've been interested in the indies. So I also rebought Celeste, which I already played on PC anyways. But good games, I've been replaying that, and also finally dove into the Tourist. Last mm-hmm. episode, I talked about how I bought it and mm-hmm. it, I heard it was cool, but I didn't look up anything on it. It's a lot of fun. It's basically a very good looking. Like it was like Digital Foundry was not kidding. I haven't watched their full video on it only because I didn't want spoilers of like you know I'm going in there completely blind and I love doing that because it's so hard to go into games and movies like that now. Mm. But um, the lighting, everything, even though it is pixelized and it's like you know silly little you know misshapen people and stuff. It's not like photorealistic or anything like that. But the lighting effects, the water, the way, you, like, the 3D... I, I need to show you guys after the episode or whatever, and I'll... Uh, if I remember, I want to link the trailer to show everybody, but... It lo- it's, looks fantastic, and it's a really cool puzzle exploration game with a lot of different layers, and some... Art, like, at least... It has the type of puzzle solving that I enjoy, where there are multiple ways to solve it. There isn't mm-hmm. just, you gotta do A to get B, like... You gotta do some critical thinking, because some of them are pretty tough. Like, I am stuck on a level, um, so I probably will be playing more Pokemon tomorrow instead. Uh, but, yeah, there's that. I want to see what I think about the new Pokemon. Like I said, my only real gripes from it, other than Dexit, was um, just the whole level restriction mm-hmm. thing during certain mm-hmm. areas that I... Again, some yeah. people say that's not that big of a deal. Again, I haven't played the game. I'm just saying, from what I've heard, that seems to be the one thing that kind of turned me off a little bit. But other than that... 
very pretty looking game. I mean, I think once you really and, get um, into it, you kind of start forgetting all that the is other a thing. Stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I've been watching um, my friends play But it. I feel like Dex it's something that's easy to get over because there are a lot of cool new Pokemon for me to learn, anyways. And to be fair, one of the cool things when we were younger in Gen One was learning all those. Those were all new Pokemon to us at <clears> one <throat> point, also. So, uh, in regards to the Dex it thing, um, there was another. There was one small podcast um, that I was listening to. It was a spinoff of uh, the one I told you about, that D&D one that I listened to. Mm-hmm. It's called Besties, and they were talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield and how with the smaller Pokedex, uh, one of them was actually kind of gets a bit more motivated to actually try and catch them all now that there's a smaller Pokedex. So there's like a pro to there, but of course one of the cons being, you know, oh, you're paying money for Pokemon for Pokebank? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, eh, eh. Right, right. Pluses and minuses all, yeah. Pluses yeah. and minuses all over the place. Pluses and minuses all over the place. I think the... I forgot if it got a... It's Metascore's fair. Like, it, it, it did pretty good. Uh, Sales-wise, like, knocked it out of the park, of course, as we mm-hmm. predicted. Yeah. I think I talked about this with John in length on our on the spinoff cast where I was just like... Yeah, no, um, it's gonna kill it. It doesn't matter the few people that are bothered by Dexit. Like, it's probably, it could be the best selling Pokemon game. I'm not quite sure it's there yet, but for sure in Japan, it is like the top selling Switch game, like mm-hmm. 100%, mm-hmm. which was held by Octopath Traveler for a while. Nice. Um, but now I think it's Pokemon, at least in Japan. Um, Octopath Traveler also really good. But I, before I get on tangent on RPGs, uh, so I played those, uh, like, touched a game. Played a little bit more of a game I played before, and then delved into a brand new game. Lots of fun. Actual good amount of gaming going on, because I had a lot of time to, especially with the whole YouTube walkout thing, which was very hard for me to uh, to participate in. Uh, but in terms of, like, I do spend a lot of freaking time on YouTube, plus I had to cancel the episode uh, for that week. But speaking of episodes, soon... I'm going to have my Game of the Year video up, which I haven't done one of those since 2015, I think, mm. or 2014. So, or, no, it might have even been, it was 2013, because that's when I gave Bayo 2, I think, Game of the Year that year. Um, so, 2013, uh, which is crazy that time flies by that much, which I will talk about time flying by in a later topic. Um, speaking of time flying by, it's been quite a while since I first heard of the guests that we got on today. Uh, we got uh, cosplay. Oh, I almost forgot to say what they were, right? which is something that people tell me I need to do because people need to let might people not know. know. Yeah. I did a pretty good job remembering them the last few episodes, mm-hmm. though. But um, esteemed cosplayer Solo on here. How are you doing, Solo? I'm doing good. I know that was a yeah. lot good of fun. that was just. I feel like the guests are just sitting there like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, and then 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 they go. But uh, <laughs> has everything been with you? Everything going good? It's fine. Oh. Been playing Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, okay, hard to yes. stay silent during all that. Okay, there you go. I know that must have been. How, how's Pokemon, Pokemon been going for you? Uh, despite all the people <laughs> that had a lot of you know several pre-release gripes and whatnot of missing Pokemans and everything, how's it been treating you? I have no problem with the new game at all. It feels like Pokemon. <clears> it <throat> looks like Pokemon. I don't get me wrong. I'm upset that my favorite Pokemon Pidgey isn't in it, but. I don't know. It feels like Pokemon. There you go. And now I'm motivated to actually use these new Pokemon instead of all my old favorites. That's a good point. I don't know. I think might actually use that Corgi one or whatever. whatever. Oh, Yamper? Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. It's cute. Does it evolve? I don't even know if it evolves. It does evolve. It's disappointing. Oh, oh, okay. I've heard the Mm. same about uh, my starter Grookey. I heard... uh, Doesn't look so great in the end, but... Mm -hmm. um, Which seems to be... It must be hard to design Pokemon at this point when mm-hmm. you're at almost a thousand. Yeah. I wonder what Pokemon yeah. one thousand is gonna look like. Yeah, better, better. It's probably gonna be a legendary. And... Some, sometimes they are a bit weird. Like I picked Sobble, and I've seen Sobble's final form. It's mm-hmm. fine, but there are those weird ones like Litten. Mm-hmm. Like Litten, I love how Litten looks. Yeah. And then Infernoar, it's like it looks uh, mm, wrestling man. Yeah, uh, it's a little weird. Cat. Yeah, I was like, man, I was kind of hoping for this awesome well, kitty, and now it's clearly you didn't Tiger spend mask. enough time in Fercadia. Because if you had, you would have seen a lot of those OCs a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It does look like someone's persona, <laughs> ain't gonna lie. Bringing, bringing up for Acadia has done something to me, I'm sure. The that's, fact that I even know what that is. That's a reference. That is man. a reference. That'll that. be a game. How many people listening to this know, well, even know or remember was even what may have been conceived during a game of Fracadia. What are we going to mention next? Gaia Online. Gaia Online. <laughs> or, oh my or, god. Um, god. I know. <laughs> 
Maple Story? Are oh. we gonna talk Maple Story? Yeah, now? Maple oh, Story. Shit, we're going, we're just going now. Yeah, we're just going all, all right. the way back. <laughs> Wow. Um, He's turning back that clock. Right? Jeez. Uh, okay, so one thing I wanted to bring up is just a random topic, but it was something I had on my mind because I'm going to start off by explaining it with me, is if you're able to play cert- a lot of games while um, doing something else. And so what I'm going to start it off with is, like, for me, I cannot watch... A- I have to do one of two things. Either I don't care about the show that's on in the background while I'm playing, or... I don't care about the game and it's just something I can really just hold forward and mash a button to play because I, especially with the game more so than the show because I don't really watch many, I just usually have YouTube going on in the background, but with the game, for example, with Witcher, that has to be all I'm doing if I'm going to play Witcher, one, so I don't die, but then two, also, because I really do like that story a lot, so I got to pay attention to it. But other people always tell me all these stories about how they're binging Netflix all day in the background and then just beating all these games that I'm just like, dude, it takes me like like three weeks mm. to a month to beat one game. That's why I'm not a score reviewer because mm. it's, I just, can't, I don't get it. And that's also a thing. I understand reviewers, that is their job and that they have all, you know what I mean? But to me, the fact that they don't just get stuck and can't beat a game and fail their assignment essentially is crazy to me. Although I'm sure some of them make it up if that's the case and they just go, let me watch someone's Let's Play real quick of the ending so I can rate it properly. <laughs> Uh, but, um, how are you guys on that spectrum? Do you guys have an easy time multi... We can just go solo, Josh, and then Mallory, but, um, do you all have a easy time, or do you like to pretty much just do one or the other? Because I'm pretty much in that camp where I'm either going to play a game or watch a show. Uh, for me, it depends on the game. Pokemon, I can, like, have something else going on, because the narrative isn't super important, Mm -hmm. but if I'm playing, like, Dragon Age... Or something, a story game. I'm playing that game. Cool. Okay. You know what I mean? Unless I'm not it's a like weirdo. my first playthrough, and I'm going through a different romance path, then I'll also watch something. But uh, normally, it's like a yeah. I don't know. I can do YouTube in the background, but again, I'm like you. It's got a. I'm play, putting something in the background. But I just want background noise. You know. Mm-hmm. Exactly, uh, Josh. Yeah, more or less the same. Uh, I mean, especially if it's something monotonous like uh, breeding eggs, you know. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Or, or like if uh, you know, playing a fighting game, just practicing combos. I okay. So, I but if you're be watching something, but if you're like Persona something, or something, probably yeah. Oh, yeah, not no. going to be. Mm-hmm. Well, with the music, especially, you're probably not oh, going to be yeah. wanting to have anything on in the background, right? <laughs> not the best thing <laughs> yes. you have to bring up because the music in that is phenomenal, and not just. It's really more than just background music. I'm not going to diss we, Shoji Mego that way. <laughs> right, my plug was in the background. <laughs> Mallory? Uh, so, I'm I'm the same. Like, when I play Destiny, I just put on music. Like, I'll have my headset on so I can talk mm-hmm. to my friends that I'm playing with. But then I have, like, something, like, music playing in the other, like, my little earbud. And I keep that on. I thought you were going to say, in my little ear. And I was going to say, <laughs> is, where is, is that located? Ear. Because Uh-oh. I... Her little tiny in ear. My, in my ear, The bud, third like... ear. The little ear. <laughs> the tiny ear. That's the special um, ear. But, like, That's when I play uh, Kingdom Hearts, like, I turn everything off. I turn the TV up. And I literally will tell my roommates, like, don't talk to me until I've come out of my mm. room. Like, just don't. But if I'm, like, learning, uh, like, um... What was it that I was playing the other day? I was playing something. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I can't remember. It's been a long week, guys. You're playing um, some game. But I had I had Netflix going because, mm. like, the it's a, it's a platformer, so I just have to, like, mm. do the platforms, but I wanted to watch um, Netflix because I'm trying to get through a series, so I was able to do that. But it really just depends on the game and, like, how focused I need to be on it. Mm-hmm. All right, so mm-hmm. it seems like I guess uh, the person, uh, the people I talk to are more weirdos than us because we all seem to like yeah. really only have something important or not. But you know, it's crazy because like someone would tell me they're just like, yeah, I was playing through Mass Effect two, and then I was also watching uh, and can give you a detailed explanation of what happened in Breaking Bad, and I'm just like, how? how? <laughs> yeah. either, either, either you have no idea what happened in Mass Effect two, yeah. or you have no idea what happened yeah. in Breaking Bad. I'm like, there's no way you kept track of both of that. Like well, my I'm brother's just, like that. Oh you really? Yeah. You can do that. What a freak! And it it, it bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that escalated. I'm like sitting there. Why are you paying attention to the alien that you're kissing? Like you're right? what? Yeah. I feel like uh, what is the name of that one? The the alien that can read books by putting their hand on it from that show when we were all like little children. Oh my god! 
<laughs> I know what he's talking uh, what, about, what too. Was it? I just can't was remember. It, was it Alex Mack? What was it, that? Uh, oh, no. Uh, Alex uh, Mack was the girl who Alex like, turned the girl into that, liquid or something. Yeah. yeah. And then Alan Strange? Or Maybe that's what it was. The, the oh, Whatever. All I know is... I just remember, but everyone knows that yeah, well, yeah, not everyone. Yeah. All all the like actual children who are listening to this have no idea what we're talking like, who about. Are they but yeah, see, I guess unless you can do that, unless you're playing your Switch game that way while doing that, you know. Not to mention, I suppose that's even harder to do if like you're playing something that's harder to play mobile. Like you could do remote play on PS4, but why? Because at least I've never seen it run super well. Like maybe I'd rather play. Maybe they're it. one of those weirdos using those Nvidia shields. Oh God! I remember you know <laughs> when we first got Google Fiber, they gave us one for free, and I think crapped out so fast. Now uh, that's not to slander Google. We've done enough of that in the last few weeks with Stadia. Me. But um, it's one of those things where it could have just been a faulty one, but it was a weird like. Why the hell would I want to use this? It's like not PC gaming enough to be that, and it's mm. far removed from console gaming, especially in terms of se- game selection, yeah. to want to do that. So it just became one of the many things we all have, which is YouTube machines, uh, which a lot of our devices are at some mm. point, whether it's the phone or your third console or whatever. Or your Xbox. Uh, or your, yeah, exactly. So hey. it's one of those hey. things where there's that. Um, Take that back, it was, That was actually all just a ploy to go there. I know. Um, the Video it's... Game Awards were recently, of course, no one really cares about the actual Video Game Award portion because unless it's from a AAA studio or an overly hyped mm-hmm. game, it typically mm-hmm. doesn't win any awards. So that part's not mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. But there were some interesting announcements, or that's subjective, of course. I thought there were a few interesting announcements. Um, were there, was there anything that kind of caught anyone's attention there? Uh, that, like, from the, the new games or sequels, uh, mostly sequels, of course, that mm-hmm. were announced? I mean, I, sl- I slept through. <laughs> I was asleep when the whole thing happened. I looked at the link you showed me. I mm-hmm. guess the only thing I'm just kind of like, ooh, is the fact that Ghosts of uh, Tsushima is still a thing. That's cool, I guess. Right. Which is uh, weird because it confuses me a lot of that Ghostwire Tokyo game, but it's not. Right. Which is um, odd. I'm confused by Bravely Default 2. <laughs> which is something we're going to talk yeah, because a friend great. messaged me, like, yeah. oh, Bravely Default um, 2 is I, coming out. I was like, I thought that was a thing. Yeah, I think that the best way, <laughs> the best way, the best tweet I saw that covered it was people complain about Bravely Default 2, like, that's weird, when people forget that Kingdom Hearts 3 is, like, the 15th game in that series. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is true. But, I mean, yeah. it's called Bravely Second. Yeah, I know. So it's like, it is, why? It, it, is, it is really weird, and I was also confused by that decision um just call it bravely default to the third the developers <laughs> the developers did say that they were uh quite shocked with how many people were upset or surprised <laughs> really by the, really the titling decision which i don't know if that's a cultural disconnect yeah. of uh, how that made no sense to western audiences at the very least because they didn't um, they didn't give it a clever name like you know, like bravely second three hundred fifty two Pythagorean yeah, theorem, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. over x, over x. <laughs> yeah, it was. First it was by definitely death squared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First by death squared. It was. It was definitely an odd. Oh God, I remember. I was listening to Castle Super Beast trying to explain the names of the uh, Kingdom Hearts games, and it was not their explanations, mm. like written by the fans slash how they yeah. like content. It was so stupid. It's weird. I, 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 I was waiting. I really wanted someone who loves Kingdom Hearts, which I, you can like it. That's fine. But to tell me that it's not stupid with good explanation. The, the naming convention is definitely strange. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm just like, you can't tell me that, that those are great names. But there were there was explanations no. of them. One was like, oh, it's because like a year happens during something with the character and seven days, or whatever, like, they were, like, three, six, eight over two days, whatever. Or whatever, and they're just, like, yeah. and then, and then yeah. this happened in two days, and I was just, like, how the hell <laughs> was anyone supposed to get that from the time? Oh, of course! Mm-hmm. Of course there were that many days plus yeah. the two between the two characters that somehow died and undied and whatever else happened in that thing. They were uh, part of the same hole. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, and anything catch your eye, Solo? Uh, no. I was just upset when I was going through, and I was like, I don't know 
like any of these games. <laughs> and also, fucking, where's Man of Medan? How is that not nominated at all? I'm oh yeah, mad. that's a that yeah, is a bit, that is quite that. that is quite the snub actually. Yeah, I haven't played it myself, but from what I've heard and the way it works and how it's like an Until Dawn, which I loved, but a easier Fine. digestible one Love in Until a Dawn. session or with friends. Because what they did is the thing I did with Detroit Become Human, with Until Dawn, where we pass the controller around and we control, we assign so certain cool. characters to each other, mm-hmm. but you can actually, it's actually a mechanic now, which was oh. yeah. fantastic. I'm glad that you brought it's that mechanic, game up. And you can do it online, too, which I haven't tried to do that, but mm-hmm. I'm like, what? I could just play with someone online and they could just fucking kill me? Yeah, Yeah, basically, which is interesting. (laughs) I think one thing I really liked about that is it really showed that they were paying attention to what the players were doing. Yeah, which many Uh a company do not Mm -hmm. do, obviously. uh, But we always beat that horse. But it's true. It's so, like, it's really sad how little times that, like, you can actually go, hey, this studio actually listened to the people, right? You, mm-hmm. you, you have ones where they mm-hmm. make that mistake, like how semi gaming related. The studio that did the Sonic redesign is all going out of business. They're all out of jobs before Christmas. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, because the super crunch started, and then laid off. Yep. Because yeah. uh, here's the thing, and of course I was getting to people about this. So when the redesign first happened, every a lot of people were like, "Oh, go support it because." They listened. They didn't listen. What happened is... No. They realized... They just wanted the money. Mm-hmm. If it had been the... You, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where they didn't really do it in a way that was genuine to listen to the fans. They listened to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they didn't yeah. listen to the fans. Um, if they realized and they would have made... on that movie would have been like... The fans aren't going to like this. Yeah. Executives just don't listen and they don't care. Right. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, the movie still doesn't look great. And mm-hmm. uh, the fact that... And it probably won't be. It's going to not be... It's going to be no Detective Pikachu. It's going to be put it that okay. Way. Yeah, at the very least, it'll be fine. Uh, but it mm-hmm. won't be close a graphical studio because you crunched them to death and then realized you weren't going to make enough money mm-hmm. because it, I believe the redesign cost $5 million. Uh, and Mm -hmm. that ended up apparently not being, you know, being too much money to keep that studio employed. Uh, so they're out. What I didn't know is apparently that studio, unless the article writer was misinformed, is apparently the same studio who did do Detective Pikachu's Mm -hmm. 3D assets. So, unfortunately, uh, trying to save the hellish Sonic movie, uh, caused people, a lot of people their jobs. And may have shut down the studios that did do that. That that part's not confirmed. The Detective Pikachu thing, that's just what they said. I mm-hmm. didn't Aww. really to that. But uh, that's a shame, you know. And right before Christmas, the worst time to get laid off. Yeah. Um, but, you know, mm-hmm. corporations and, yeah. and, and yada, yada, yada. But, it, yeah, no, it sucks, though. And, and that's the thing, is that, to me, was not a genuine listening to the fans move. Uh, the case, of course, that you brought up, that obviously was nice to see that they did make, you know, adjustments for that. What about you, Mallory? Um... Obviously, the Project Scarlet was given a name. Mm-hmm. What a what a brilliant name! Right, um, so exciting on that one. Because the X who knew the Xbox Sex is exactly what was the next. You know, you had the X Bone, the X Bone Sad, and then of course the obvious follow up is the Xbox Sex. So, yeah. With that being the case, um, I think that we're gonna talk more in depth about it later. So, just so you know, I'm not snubbing it. Per se, where it's going to actually be one of the main topics that we're going to mm-hmm. talk about. Uh, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. What a weird name. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Say, aren't there but, already memes of, like, the Death Stranding guy? Like, you carry yeah, 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 we have Norman Reedus <laughs> carrying the Xbox Series X. Uh, but aside the Xbox, um, which I'm sure it is an interesting console, mm-hmm. um, but... Anything else fan, uh, catch your fancy that you saw that you're familiar with? Not so much. I didn't watch too much of the Game Awards just because I was working a lot. Right. It happened. At, um, and plus, again, no one actually cares about these shows as a whole. Yeah. So. Um, but I did I did read some uh, <laughs> interesting articles like about the new Xbox. I'm just going to call it new Xbox because I don't like the name. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> that, even she doesn't like the name. I don't name. like the name. She's the, I know, she's the Xbox insert of the podcast <laughs> no. and she doesn't like the name. I don't like it. I wanted it to be something cooler. Um, That's not more cooler than that. That is a terrible It's just so crazy. If if the Xbox One had just remained being called Project Scorpio 
And if this yeah, Xbox like Series so X cool had just been called Project Scarlet, like you those both would have been perfectly awesome names for I consoles. I love it even should've more. Should have just called it the two. <laughs> or, or they should have just gone that route. My yeah. favorite still is the Xbox 360 because it makes you do a 360 and walk away. Mm-hmm. That's still my that's favorite. Horrible, and I stupid that's horrible. Stupid diss. That's not true. That oh, someone actually told you Some, that. Someone said that. and uh, Des- Doesn't know their uh, Yeah, doesn't the know how we, yeah, that, that works. I mean, maybe it feels um, a 180. Yeah. But. <laughs> just um, looking at it again. Right, but but nothing really. Uh, uh, no, not really. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't watch the the game awards because I was working. No, I said what games? I don't care about the game oh. awards. Stop oh, bringing oh. that up. Sorry. Um, <laughs> there was one on the list that you sent me that looks cool, and I'll have to check out before. Was it Hellblade Two? No. Oh. No, it was Nine to Five, I think. With Dolly Parton? No. Oh, hold on, I'm looking for it. All right. <laughs> well, 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 it's, yeah. nine to five. it's called 9 to 5, guys. Oh, oh yeah, it was called 9 to 5. Yeah, it looks cute. I totally forgot about that one. It does look cute, though. And it doesn't it's have Dolly Parton? It's a bunch of rabbits mm. with guns, guys. <laughs> it is a bunch of rabbits with guns, which could be fun. <laughs> like. Okay. Uh, and then we could, so we, for me, we talked about Bravely Default 2 already mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. awesome naming convention. The Game Awards, always full of awesome gaming conventions. The Xbox Series X, Bravely Default 2. Um, but on top of that, you can go more traditional, right? You can go with what was in, uh, finally revealed. We talked about it back when John and I were the hosts, uh, which is of the cast, which is No More Heroes Three. Uh, Suda Fifty One teased earlier in the summer that he was going to reveal a game later in the year. Everyone, of course, just assumes what else could it be? It's probably going to be No More Heroes Three. It was No More Heroes Three. <laughs> Awesome game. Uh, Travis Touchdown is a legend, and it's nice to see that back. I really hope that the uh, remasters hit Switch, because it is going to uh, launch on Switch as well, which is great. Um, but I'm very excited. It's nice to see some of these unsung heroes, uh, Deadly Premonition 2, uh, No More Heroes 3, stuff like that, get their sequels that have been kind of put away for a while because they're not Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. But it's nice to see other games that are actual pieces of art or fun games be given a second wind or more. Um, games. And then the other one that I have mixed feelings about, but was kind of excited to see, Wolf Among Us 2 was announced at the Game Awards. Uh, Telltale, of course, being super dead. Mm -hmm. Uh, But some of the franchises did say by the new uh, law firm or whatever that acquired uh, the corpse of Telltale, and it did say they were going to bring back some of the dead uh, franchises. Mm -hmm. They did like another Walking Dead, uh, or announced that they're doing another Walking Dead season. Uh, and then, of course, now Wolf Among Us 2. Now, before I get wait, too excited, wait, I'd love... Wait! I didn't l- click your link, and I just clicked your link? There's going to be a Surgeon Simulator 2? No, yes, yes there is going to be Surgeon Simulator 2. <laughs> That's the best drunk game to play with your friends! <laughs> it is. Wow. It's... <laughs> those games are too hard for me to play, and they're, they're just like... sober? <laughs> yeah. It, I, guess that, I guess that game is better if you're drunk. Mm. I'm probably better when, at it. Like, like when you're just a little buzzed and one friend has the mouse and the other friend has the hand, oh, like man. the keyboard. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds chaotic. I feel like we should make a video of this. We I've could. Got Japanese whiskey still. So. Oh. Oh. Huh. It's so wow. much fun. Not a good time to do when you have to wake up early, though. Mm. I wish, or I'd yeah. say, let's do it right now. No, I'm sure. Mm. Everybody's <laughs> next day off. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Plan something. I know. Right. That'd be fun to do. Stream. Yeah, streaming that, on Twitch. There you go. Actually, we have, it's been a lot overdue for a, a stream. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm a, I, I'm excited, but also a little wary because I did love Wolf Among Us. In fact, I would say Wolf Among Us, in my opinion, best Telltale game. Mm-hmm. My opinion. Um, I still need to finish it. But oh, you didn't? No. Oh, so when the well, LP we, ended, yeah, we, so we that ended that. for you because yeah. I'd already beat it at that point. And then so. there was the thing where we recorded the fourth episode, but then it didn't. I guess something happened with the file. And that yeah, got that is shit. Yeah. And yeah, I just never got around. One to of these days the we'll do a one. stream. You know what? That's another good whiskey. Just excuses to get whiskey or sake. And right. Just, you know. But mm. uh, right. So it's by another studio, and the studio is of course. I don't like the way they're selecting it because they're basically just going through Telltale Corpse's manifesto and being like what made a lot of money mm-hmm. and they're revising those ones. Uh-huh. Not necessarily because mm-hmm. anyone gives a fuck, but just because which of their franchises made the moolah. Yeah. Which you always have people, you know, corporate, you know, apolo- you know, um, sympathizers who always go up to me and be like, well, it's a business. You should need to stop being mad. And I'm just like, yeah, 
but they could not be shitty and be a business at yeah. the same time. This happens. Um, but anyways, yeah. so I, I do it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Excited, but you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see when it comes out. By, by a bit because I, I love Telltale Games. Right. So I'm looking through a lot of them now. Mm-hmm. Did you guys watch all the trailers for all of these games? Uh, uh, the ones I found interesting. So that's very subjective. Uh, what? <laughs> Did you watch what's Human Kind? I must not have watched that Did one. You? I saw it. It was no. In, I, I didn't watch the trailer because I just got the link. Um, mm-hmm. But I saw that one and I thought it looked interesting mm-hmm. just from the little bit I did see. Oh God! Mm-hmm. I just love I love narrative mm-hmm. and like if that's a like choose your own like path like you know like Telltale Games and I'm mm-hmm. like oh wait is that a it's just the trailer just says like your story I'm like. Shit, do I get to pick like, is it everything? Me? Am I God? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I need a no. for for all of those who didn't see it, I am gonna drop that in the the notes below because there is a few things that I should have prefaced with everything like Weird West. Uh, yeah, Weird West and looks then, like another um, one. The Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance um successor finally. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that. But uh, no one cares about Fast and the Furious. More Final Fantasy VII Remake, which would be fine. Uh, yeah, the Humankind one, actually. I should I didn't actually watch that one. Well, now I have. Now I get to check it out later. And then Magic Legends. I'm it sure says, it's going to be a card game. I looked up a little bit. Yeah, I saw and... that. I was like, is that Magic the Gathering? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I just find that weird, though, because they have Magic Arena. You kind of think they're putting that, that everything on that. That, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, whatever. Well, it's kind of like how uh, League of Legends is coming out with another. Like, uh, I already knew that they were doing the card game. They right. have TFT. They have a mobile that's coming out. And now they're going to have League of Legends Rune King? Right. Like, what and, is, yeah. What, what? They're <laughs> trying to go the Blizzard route, like, but they're trying to do it whole hog really fast. Like, and they're still trying they're to do the releasing, fighting game. They're doing a fighting game, yeah. too. Uh, they announced, I believe, <clears throat> at their last keynote that they, I believe they said within 20... 20 and 2021, seven new Riot games we're going to be releasing. Mm. So, uh, I, I, and from what I understand, at least for the fighting game and maybe the other one, is that they are going to try to continue the free to play model for all of them. Yeah. So, that's good. It's, I'm excited it, to hear that. Free, free to play games are definitely awesome when handled well and scary mm-hmm. when handled grossly. Because, like, yeah, no. Riot it, it, has gotten so much of my fucking money because they, ha- I feel like they handle it well. And I'm like, good job, guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll, pay um, for, I'll pay for a pretty skin. Yeah, Riot is one of those companies that the, the controversies are fairly hidden behind the curtain that they suffer through. Yeah, that's very true. But you're right. They at least keep it. It sucks that they have skeletons, but they do definitely leave them in the closet at least. It does. I would say that, yes, their handling and the way they run the actual video game business side of things yeah. is Nothing definitely Nothing about the behind fair. the curtain stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. Which we did talk about last time. Thankfully, uh, all the misogynistic uh, suits are going to be mm-hmm. handled, thankfully, and I'm glad that mm-hmm. all those, that they ended up losing that lawsuit, or settling. Mm-hmm. Let's be fair. Settling means they lost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. They knew they were really going means, to lose. Yeah. Because <laughs> $10 million is just not something you obviously would give up if you felt you could win that case. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. So, we never usually have this big of an intro before we ask questions, so now I feel like this might almost offset <laughs> the uh, the cast as a, as a, like a bit of a, an awkward break, but um, so solo. You're a cosplayer, as I mentioned about thirty <laughs> minutes ago. Um, <laughs> this is good. Tell I've never had this be such a weird insert. Tell um, us of the cosplay. So yeah, I guess to keep it brief, just because like I don't know. It's we'll see how it, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll feel the flow. We'll feel yeah. the flow. But um, how how long ago was it that you got into cosplay, and what did you see or what was your exact, like, introduction at that time into cosplay? Because it's definitely a very unique uh, hobby, or sometimes job. Well, this actually is a perfect segue, because Kingdom Hearts is what got me into cosplay. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Relevance. So, uh, it was 2006, 
2007, I believe. No, actually, 2006 was my first costume. It was Bridget from Guilty Gear. Oh, nice. Um, nice. But uh, then it was everything, like, the what really evolved after that was all because of Kingdom Hearts, because uh, I'm from Michigan. We had a bunch of people on the Yomacon forums, which is, like, Michigan, at the time it was Michigan's, like, only anime convention. Mm -hmm. And we kind of started this, like, Kingdom Hearts, like, text roleplay in the forums. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where everyone got assigned a character, and then we showed up to the convention as those characters. Oh, wow. And we just had a nice. huge group. That's pretty and, cool. And, uh... Yeah, and then that's just, I was like, this is so much fucking fun. And then I did it for ever. I still, I cosplay less than I used to mm -hmm. because I don't have as much of a disposable income as I did when I was in high school. Fair but. enough. <laughs> but yeah, um, so when you, oh man, how many, it's been a while since you moved now, but um, yeah. do, do you ever plan on going back to Yomacon? Or do you still uh, try to? Uh, so here's the thing. Yomacon is cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate cold. Ah. I also don't know a lot of people who are still in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not that I'm like uh, unopposed to it, but it was also, it's kind of like a hard time to get away, right? For like, I was working retail until very recently, so I was like, it was hard to get time off in, like, the middle of October, mm -hmm. late October. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so as of right now, it's not really on my radar, but that's because most conventions aren't really on my radar anymore. Fair enough. Uh, it's so crowded, and I'm so old now. <laughs> I know that feeling. I had to suffer that feeling a lot, like, I, cause yeah, yesterday was my, oh, wait, hold on. It's Monday at 11 a.m. Yeah, hold on. Uh, two days ago, um, I turned 32, so I got to go over that hill. And, um, Ugh. so yeah, no, I, I got to feel that thought where I was just like a few people that were about 10 or 12 years younger than me at my workplace were talking about something, and I said, what the hell did I just hear? <laughs> like, I felt like I didn't understand anything they just said. I was just like, is this, is yeah. this how they speak now? Is this <laughs> English now? I, I, I don't know what just happened. Yeah. But, um, yeah. If yeah. I were to go back to the Midwest for a con, it would probably be C2E2, though. Oh, okay. I've only heard of that con primarily because of the initials. Oh, but... that's the one in Chicago, right? Chicago? Chicago, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I've heard of that one. Yeah, that one, that one, I've heard of that one definitely, especially because of the, the name I was here, C2E2, yeah. but, um... I'm yeah, it's like, like, it's super comic booky, and I think that's why I like it. Okay, cool, And you get a cool. lot of cool guests. Mm -hmm. It's also Chicago, so there's a lot of good food. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, you're, you're currently in L.A., right? Or in California? Yeah. Okay, uh, several, you know, Anime Expo and whatnot there, do you delve in that or like you said you haven't been hitting many cons lately <laughs> have anime expo not even been a thing despite being uh, in the area oh hell no not <laughs> anime expo i hate anime expo it's oh. too crowded and i like, hear it's ugh. pretty insane mm -hmm. yeah I, i've so, heard a so lot of people just awful. right and that's the thing i hear is that it's about finding that con that is big enough that a lot of people go there mm -hmm. and they get the right you know, enough guests or enough is going on or they have enough uh, vendors, mm -hmm. but not too big. Yeah. Because another con I hear a lot of gripes about of being a little too busy for some people's taste uh, is uh, San Diego Comic Con. Mm -hmm. I heard that yeah. gets insane. So Yeah, I'm going um, for the first time this one coming up. I'm going, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm already like, I feel like I'm going to age five years in just that <laughs> weekend. <laughs> Absolutely, like it's just yeah. everybody yeah, like talks I, I about agree. going to that one. Mm -hmm. and, mm, I, I, I think the one that I definitely want to go to uh, probably next year, if possible, if we could coordinate that, would be Dragon Con. Probably that'd be sick. Mm -hmm. I hear Dragon Con mm -hmm. is pretty badass. I, I would probably have to miss out on San Japan because for whatever we would have to reason, trade out. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would. I would trade out for the other. That, that's a thing. Um, I, I don't. I have my differences with the San Japan people, as many people yeah. I know uh, do. But it's a fun con. Um, yeah. 
So, but I, but I've definitely heard from people that have been to both that Dragon Con definitely just, takes the cake for scheduling them at the same time. Don't get why they're like always. You know what so it is, weird. and I'm going to say exactly what it is on this <laughs> cast because fuck him. Uh, the the creator of San Japan thinks he's as big as Dragon Con. That's the main problem. It's an ego yes. thing. Mm. He feels that he can schedule his con at the same time and not realize that the only people who go don't just can't go to Dragon Con. I feel like if there was a if there <laughs> yeah. was a portal, most people will prefer yeah, Dragon Con. If there was a portal that opened up to Dragon Con for that same weekend and said, "Hey, you can go to San Japan or you can walk through this portal and appear at Dragon Con." I feel like almost no one except for him and his friends would go to San Japan. Mm-hmm. I mean, today's it, podcast is brought to you by <laughs> San Japan. Coming up in I know Japan. <laughs> I mean, it already is mostly him and his friends. <laughs> to well, that's to the be thing. fair, and I just—it's just I've been to so many conventions, and the, and, and the mm-hmm. contrasting ones that blew my mind was when we went to Pac South, yeah, uh, versus San Japan, where Pac South I expected. To have douchey staff and all this stuff because it's a bigger con. Yeah. I thought they were gonna have Packs an ego. And are really good. They, they were awesome. The yeah. staff was extremely professional. Nobody rolled their eyes at you when you asked how to get to a part of the convention center, as if you you're just supposed to know where. Yeah. They didn't dictate where my feet should be, like you know, and like it's just they're just very. Oof, I don't know. It, it's like they've. They're all that person that got bullied their entire life, and now for once they have a bit of power. It just, it really is. They all have power trips. They go yeah. mad. They go mad. Like, even in their comment section, they actually censor their San Japan forum and, and Facebook uh, comments. Mm. If they don't like what you're saying, they get mad. Like, me, for example, I shared a video. I, 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 uh, one of the San Japans I went to, I made a compilation video of, of moments that I had at San Japan. Mm. I shared it on the thing, and I had his dumbass blocked, right? So he couldn't see it, uh, but he saw my post, but he couldn't get see the link. Mm-hmm. So he goes in the comments, though, and goes, if, if this isn't set to public in the next five minutes, it's being deleted. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God. how about ask me, ping me, DM me? And be like, hey, bro, I can't see it. Is there a reason? And I would have told you, oh, I have your dumbass block. Let me unblock you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, like, what is that? Like, you're threatening? Like, I, what are you, YouTube threatening content creators? Like, I don't understand, like, where they're like, go. I was just like, anyways, that's a whole thing that this became. Um, a thing. But, you know, a lot of the talent we know <laughs> that used to frequent San Japan and perform there a lot don't go there anymore. And it's for reasons like this. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw them under the bus or, or, or air out their laundry by saying yeah. who I'm talking about. But we have, you know, so we it's people. just, we just, know, we do know people that don't want to guess there anymore. Yeah. And it's because he's yeah. a big dickhead. Um, <laughs> I've heard a lot of bad stuff about conventions and not, that's Texas, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it's in yeah. Texas. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Acon's there's another one that's share way too. worse, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah there, I guess there's... we don't talk about that. Oh yeah. yeah. No, like, oh, what's, what's the one? Anime Matsuri? Oof. Yeah, Matsuri, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's got some controversies for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I went there one year and it was shitty. <laughs> I still can't believe it's going on still. When yeah, I saw no, I think them... it would have been like super canceled. Yeah, when I, when well... I saw them selling tickets for this year, I said, is this like... Okay, I was going to make a reference to a joke that no one was going to get. So, uh, a year or two ago, there was a big, uh, uh, an alleged... A uh, big uh, K-pop festival somewhere up north that was going to happen, right? Mm. Uh, so they sold tickets. It was bullshit, right? So it was all like they they were saying that oh we have all these acts booked and we're going to do this whole thing and it's going to be like KCON, which is an actual thing and big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it's our, I forgot what they called it. So it's been a meme now where we always joke about how oh so and so like if it's a har- uh, group that probably won't perform in the states, we we'll always go oh no they're totally going to be at and we say that whatever the fuck <laughs> the name of that fake ass uh-huh. convention is. But they got everyone good. Um, in fact, they even, um, actually semi-booked some acts and, like, got them to, like, provide, like, merch and, like, some other stuff or whatever, and, like, ghosted them, too, and, like, like, they, like, fucked with some artists and they fucked with the fans and... Uh, all people's hopes up about, you know, whatever. So mm-hmm. my whole joke was going to be, I thought it was going to be an anime with series now that. A not a con. Not a real con. Or, like, Dash Con? Oh, yeah, 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 I just say Dashcon. Yeah. God. Ball pit. We could. Woo! Ball pit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, We Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, yeah. So San Japan isn't that bad. <laughs> we should count our blessings. But fuck right? them. But I still say fuck them yeah. anyways. 
Um, no, because all right, you know, I'm gonna tell the story. Fuck this shit. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> oh, oh, I was yeah. at a, I was at redacted. Uh, I was at a concert. I was at a concert. I'm not gonna throw that artist under the bus. Okay. But I was at a local concert and. The San Japan dude, I like I'm not saying his name, but I'm saying who he is. <laughs> yeah. um, he was there, and like, it's whatever, he's just in a crowd. He's a human, I, mm-hmm. he's, you know, in everyone else's it's eyes, but human. his. He's allowed to exist. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so... He's allowed to leave his you house. Know, and then, I just overhear, like, him talking to somebody, and he goes, I mean, you know who I am, right? <laughs> and I'm just like, no, no one knows who the fuck you are, okay? I, 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 I knew who he was, unfortunately, <laughs> But, like, the person didn't because they're there to watch this concert yeah. completely unrelated yeah. to San Japan. And then he goes... Oh, I wrote an anime convention. Yeah, basically. Right? Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm the one who started San Japan. I'm like, wow. Do you not that's know? Cool. Do you not recognize King Wee? Yeah, dude, he had that air about it. And I was mm. just like, what? Oh. I was just like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? So the thing I find dumb. funny is, like, he doesn't even live here. Yeah, that, there's that too. <laughs> so that he runs an anime the, convention in a city he doesn't live. Yeah, which is really oh, funny. Boy. And on top of that, makes even more sense that no one here knows who he is yeah. in terms of like physical. Like, hmm. hey, you're that douchebag who deletes my comments from Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all I. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was just that was one of the first times I heard him just be. I always heard stories up to that point, mm-hmm. but that was my first personal witness yeah. of, like, his douchebaggery. Um, you were like, nobody can actually be like that. Someone's exaggerating. Right. Uh, and then I experienced it. And yeah, it was no, true. Yeah, like, every time I work San Japan, I always try to avoid him at all costs. Um, yeah. There was, I think it was two years back, um, I had the misfortune of having to run one of his panels. It oh. was It was not great. Because it was a Jackbox Party Box panel. Oh. For, for, for him and his friends. Oh, that's a fun panel, though. Yeah, it's I a mean, fun panel if yeah. everyone else was playing and not just him and his friend. Well, here's the stupid <laughs> thing. Like, his his laptop wasn't fucking working with the equipment. And I'm just there troubleshooting, and I'm just like, it's the equipment, it's the equipment, it's the equipment. It's, it's me. His. Yeah, because before that, like, one of the voice actors was over. And it was fun. Um, and he set up his, uh, his MacBook because they were going to play, like, this hilarious... Texarkana Gamera dub. Mm-hmm. I was really excited, but then he got the room like he was like, "Oh, I'm in the other one." I was like, "Damn!" So he left. So his equipment worked, but then he shows up with his laptop. It's not working, and then we have to t- call the head guy. And I'm just standing there twiddling my thumbs like it's his uh, equipment. And it turns out it was like his work computer. He was trying to use his own work computer. <laughs> I, I, you know, as long as this is his work. Yeah. That was about his life's work. Yeah. That just made me think of of earlier this year when Randy Pitchford left the thumb drive of oh, yeah, like yeah. that had sensitive gearbox development and work documents related to the at the time unreleased and unannounced Borderlands 3 as well as squirt mm-hmm. porn and he left it at a kid's pizza restaurant. Let's also not mention the fact that that was a thing. And he left the he just left the thumb drive there, and that's what the contents were. Uh, so I feel like San Japan Man is not far from that. Man. Anyways, we had to set him up with a PS4 because this wouldn't work. So yeah, I hated, professionalism. I hated working that panel for him. I hope I never have to do one again. Hopefully not. Yep. Oh, right, so this is about Solo. Hey, right. so, so, <laughs> so you mentioned, <laughs> so you mentioned you were, uh, playing Pokemon recently. Any other games, uh, in, in the busy life you try to fit in that you've been able to check out or play recently? Everything that I'm playing is, like, has existed for a shit long, long time. Like, mm. uh, I, I still play League. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm playing, like, Civilization Ooh. And, uh, what is it? Endless Empire? That one I don't know if I'm familiar with. Yeah, I, don't know. I knew the other one. It's though. like Civ, but oh, okay. like a little bit more like high fantasy. Ooh. Nice, nice. The last one I played in Death of like Civ was Civ 5. Mushroom people and mushroom stuff, people. but it's basically just civilization. Oh, cool. Mushroom men. They're probably fun guys <laughs> to play as. And then... But yeah, no, there's, there's no games. I'm still sitting over here. Uh, I... I it's so it's so hard. I watch people play a lot of games. I love let's plays. Mm-hmm. But I just don't have the time to play games like I used to. Mm, yeah. you know? Right. So These I'm in troubles. that. I, yeah, I'm in that. I definitely relate with those troubles for sure because 
Ever since I got into watching Let's Plays back in the 2012-2013 time and became a content creator myself, I've almost sometimes not want to play video games. I'd rather just watch someone play it for me, or I when I play it, I'm like, this is for work, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for mm -hmm. video. I don't actually care. <laughs> like, it's sad, but it, yeah, we, we've kind of evolved into a really weird era. You know, if you told like 90s us that like hey in the future when like we always wanted to, we didn't want to share shit like mm -hmm. when you had to like share with a sibling or a friend it was always you were always just wanting you couldn't give a fuck less until it was your turn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we live in an era where we're just like dude just play the whole game i'm watching yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm watching this whole 13 hour let's play over time like let me get some pizza and beer we'll go time yeah it, it's become a weird thing where the game as a uh, entertainment medium has shifted in a really interesting position where not everyone just plays games anymore mm -hmm. like, like yeah. you know you do have that sect of people that still do but I mean it's pretty widespread a lot of demographics of people I know at work from People who just play Call of Duty type games to more in depth people that are playing, you know, oh god, there was this one cringy girl that would talk to people at work about Shin Megami Tensei, like anyone knew what the fuck that was. Like, we know what it is, obviously. <laughs> yeah. We like Persona yeah. or SMT or whatever, but she was just saying it like people should just know. I overheard the conversation. Thank god I was sitting on the toilet already, but I, I overheard the conversation and, I would, and she was just like, you don't know Shin Megami Tensei? I'm like, no one knows that, okay? I'm the only other person no. in this goddamn building right now who knows what that is. What do you Stop saying it like that. Weeb, okay? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean you don't know the difference between an Agi and a Bufu spell? Dude, no. She's the type of person who walked around work going, yeah. I bought these Japanese candies at the Japanese store. Oh. You want one? Mm. It's yeah. a really obscure thing you, American person, has never heard of before. Would you like to insert this into your mouth? And, and, and I'm just like, what is wrong with you? You're the weeaboo that we all joke about. Like, like, like even us who like, like anime. I don't know like you is. <laughs> she was friendly enough, but my god, she had no actual, like, filter. <laughs> like, I think there was something wrong with her, though, so to be fair, like... To be fair. To, to be yeah. fair. But... To be um, fair, I, I think anime does uh, draw a lot of people on the spectrum, so I try to be kinder now that yeah. I'm a, a grown adult, but yeah. yeah, I think I think there's a lot to be said for, uh, I think a lot of people in anime and convention culture are somewhere on the spectrum and just not diagnosed. It's true. It's, yeah, I mean, this is true, and this is one thing that I feel bad, because I'm, I'm already, like, kind of, I'm not the most sociable person, mm -hmm. so I hate when I'm... I could be at an anime event or, or like the other day or not the other day, but like weeks ago I was at locals for Yu-Gi-Oh and this one guy's talking to me and it's like, you know, you can tell there's something off and I'm trying to be nice, but it's like, I, I also kind of just don't want to talk to somebody right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a weird, it's, no, you're it's like, no. Yeah. no, wait, I'm, I'm also awkward and I don't. Yeah. Want to do this. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't want to be mean because I don't know everybody there. You're turning so me into I a don't... more awkward person than you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not social with everyone here, but someone here is trying to be sociable to me, but I don't yeah. want to be sociable. That, it was always tough. <laughs> when, she was, when she was talking to me about stuff, I would just have to be like, how? I, I, I yeah. just need to, yeah. I just need to nod my head and. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Look for an out. Yeah. yeah for an exactly. No. Yeah. No. It's there's a fire when, over there. It's tough when you're trying home. to be considerate and kind, but you're also <laughs> just like not in that mindset yeah. either. Yeah. 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 It's mm, it's rough. It's rough, buddy. It's hard. That's why, yeah. why I feel like Zoom it really is. And animal. you're absolutely right that <laughs> it, it is a thing where I know someone listening is going to say I was being a super dickhead and insensitive. Like, I don't know that. Um, but, oh, no. it, it, but it is one of those things where that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like a lot of people are, and it's tough, especially because, let's face it, the most uh, popular and prissy people weren't the biggest into anime. They <laughs> maybe saw Dragon Ball Z on TV yeah. and know mm -hmm. what Goku is. But other than that... And if Dragon Ball Z most... is your favorite anime, you already have basic taste. In it. <laughs> right, exactly. And it is one of those things where... Just... I'll... I'll... home. <laughs> yeah, no. But it is, yeah. They're also really allergic to soap for some reason. 
I, know, I thought those uh, were Smash players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Smash players, too. That's yeah. true. Um, oh, I love that Konami made that, put that into their rules policy that was for the their best. Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. You yeah. must bathe. You must bathe. <laughs> yes, please. This is, uh, this is, um, this is body wash and body spray. Please apply an appropriate amount. Yeah. Um, so I don't know why that game became... Exactly, no one can think. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, now that the, uh, bashing anime fans corner is out of the way and just... Oh, it never just, ends. And just, uh, it never ends, it's true. But, uh, curbing it a slight bit for now before... We haven't even started the long news <laughs> docket. Um, real quick... Do you have a particular video game or anime soundtrack that uh, really sticks to you to this day that like still gets you super hyped when you hear it, or like absolutely like a non-licensed soundtrack that is like just super in your feels when you hear it? I mean, for me, it's honestly, it's honestly Kingdom Hearts. Yes. If, if I hear it, like Simple and Clean, or if I hear Sanctuary, Ooh. or I hear any of that, like it gets me pumped. It, it's on my Pandora. Like, I, I have a playlist for when I would just feel like being a fucking weave and pranking <laughs> that shit and singing along. Nice. Absolutely. Okay, yes. That, and and that, it's always Good nice songs. to have that because at least the person that made your favorite video game soundtracks isn't accused of rape like my one of my favorite composers <laughs> is. So, uh, you have that advantage. That's definitely true to be able to... You know, it's really sad. You know, like... I love the KOTOR soundtracks. I love oh, only Star Wars reference. Uh, I love the KOTOR soundtracks, and I love uh, the Elder Scroll, Elder Scroll. Well, Morrowind, and Oblivion soundtracks. But when the news came out that the dude is alleged rapist, mm. I'm just like, wow, that's fucked. Because now I can't, I can't enjoy that music the same way. Really, like I hear it and I go, like, I mean, God, this is so beautiful, and also, yikes. <laughs> I'm trying to remember for the name sure, of and like it's good to be conscious of that stuff. But for you. That music has, like, personal value. Exactly. So I think that you should allow yourself to still have that, for Thank sure. You. Because no, I appreciate that. And, and, how how uh, many hours have you put into those games? Oh, yeah. God, you yeah, even, you're like, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of When hundreds. you're listening to them, you're not thinking of that guy and, like, yeah. things that he could have done. You're thinking of, like, your nostalgia. <clears throat> and I think that that shouldn't be taken from you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And it's definitely something... I, uh, being in this industry, especially covering a lot of controversies, it does get pretty heavy. It's actually why one of my co-hosts, uh, quit. Uh, he's on the, he, he came back now on our spinoff one, but he did quit for a few months because it was just very heavy to talk about all the time, just focusing on and reporting on the negative sides of the industry. Um, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. It, it is good to take a step back, separate it, and maybe think about the fact that, what those memories are and what that held for me um, had nothing to do in that sense, in a, in a, in a nostalgic and, and um, personal sense, mm -hmm. separated yeah. from him and what his actions are outside of, you know, but um, yeah, no, but... Yeah, as long as you're agreeing that he shouldn't be able to can still continue, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, but... Yeah, it was, that was an absolutely fucked story. And he was, yeah. the, the worst part is he was one in a string of... Uh, of people who were um, a bunch of female devs in the industry spoke up about their, you know, um, predators and stuff like that. So he was part of a huge outing of, mm. um, and I was, it was just sad to hear, see his name on the list. Thankfully, no one else I really, like, Nobu Amatsu, thank God, wasn't on there and anyone, you know. So, yeah. um, but there's that. Any tangentially related, any um, current TV shows you've been watching um, that you've been really into. I like to do this section just to get suggestions, just in case it's something I need to watch in terms of any anime or TV shows you've been checking out lately, when you have time. It's a little older, but uh, a little bit. Uh, we I just finished Sabrina with my boyfriend, and I am excited for the next season. We wow, just coincidentally, went on about that. Yeah, coincidentally, before we got you on the line, Miss <laughs> Mallory here was actually yeah. just talking I about was. how she was watching it. I, that's the series I started, and... It makes my best friend uncomfortable watching it with me. He's super Christian. <laughs> super Christian. And he's like, I don't like oh this. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. I'm going to be a witch. Yeah, when I'm going to be a witch. <laughs> um, when I, having grown up watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch growing up and having a huge crush on Melissa Joan Hart, mm. um, and that being a very obviously 
comedic yeah. and lighthearted show. When I heard yeah, the direction that they went with, I mean, to be fair, with Archie and um, and uh, Riverdale, and Riverdale mm-hmm. they went that. That's it's been done before, mm-hmm. but I really like in. Uh, well, Sabrina, I haven't watched it, but uh, mm-hmm. with Riverdale, like it's an interesting way to take these really mm-hmm. bright things and tastefully mm-hmm. turn them yeah. a bit twisted. Um, so yeah, when I sure. saw I that mean, they went that direction, I was like, wow. <laughs> It's following more closely to the comics that we're currently running. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. they rebooted it in the comics first, and then it hit. So, they're like, let's just make it a show. And I think it's, it's still very funny in a lot mm-hmm. of places, mm-hmm. and it touches on a lot of stuff. But I, I fucking love it. So That's cool. No, I'll definitely check I it out then. I love all the Easter eggs that they put in there, like the, the name drops and stuff on some of the characters. I'm just like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's Lovecraft. <laughs> Yeah. Lovecraft has never worked on anything I've ever heard. No, just <laughs> no God. You know, oh, uh, that's the thing we're talking, uh, not we were talking about, but that's the thing I heard in a conversation recently on another podcast that made me think, uh, was when they were talking about horror that actually scares you mm. versus horror that's cool and how, like, a lot of huh. H.P. Lovecraft stuff is more, like, cool than it is, like, actually, like, I'm sure he has some stuff in there, but from the things I've read that have to do with Lovecraft, it does sound pretty badass more than it's, like, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I'm scared to go outside. I might. Damn. It's it's either it like too. it's either like badass or like uncomfortably racist. Well, oh yeah, which is interesting how, <laughs> yeah. and that's absolutely true yeah. and very interesting how in the beginning of when I was playing the Sinking City, which is a uh, Lovecraft based game, that they actually do have that disclaimer at the beginning. That's yeah. basically like, hey, any racist shit that happens is based on his racist shit, not mm. our racist shit. So be aware, uh, which. Light spoilers, if anyone doesn't mind that I delve into that real quick about, because I told Josh about this a few months ago, but uh, for those, just in case you don't plan on going to Sinking City, it's not like a major plot part, but just want to spoil, uh, Sully, you're cool with me mentioning this part real quick, it's just a very yeah, yeah, tangential yeah, thing, I've but... Yeah, 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 I'm curious about this game. Okay, so Sinking City is a really cool game, he plays as a detective who comes into this town, and because uh, he's been having these weird visions of Cthulhu, doesn't know what Cthulhu is, obviously, um, mm-hmm. and all that stuff, so it starts off... And they had that warning at the beginning, and nothing really racist is happening. And I'm just like, okay, good, good. Um, you can tell that in the time period, um, you know, black people aren't really equal to everybody else in the town. Okay, mm-hmm. that's getting a little racist. Uh, then there starts to be uh, these fish people are introduced, and there's starting to be hate crimes against them. And I'm yeah. just like, okay, I see where it's pretty racist now. It's like they're doing the thing like what Detroit Become Human did very poorly in a better way where they're just like, oh, okay, they're trying to take the hate crime thing and, and shift it a little more sensitive by doing a fictional race. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, I see that. Then the KKK shows up and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> it, it is going oh, to get... There it is. There it is. The actual KKK shows up eventually and is Jeez. like involved in, you know, a, a, a sub-villain, if you will. Oh, uh, and I'm just like, oh... At are least it wasn't like the some the actual Ku Klux Klan. I was gonna say at least. It's... Are they going after the fish people? Mm-hmm. Oh, so was it like some birth of a nation thing? We're like, we'll save you from the fish people. Basically, like, yeah. Thanks. Uh, and, thanks. And some pretty they some pretty heavy shit because the KKK is fucked up. Yeah. Um, uh, they, yeah. they do some pretty <laughs> awful shit in that, and and, mm-hmm. and it goes on from there. But a lot of cool mystical stuff. Uh, and then you know, as you get further and further through it, you actually the narrative direction and the decisions, you actually do have decisions you can make, factions you can side with as the story goes. It's an awesome game that is so hard to suggest. Uh, Mm. For me, it is like Deadly Premonition, where it is one of my favorite games I've ever played, but it's hard for me to suggest because they are both extremely broken games. Mm -hmm. Um, Sinking City is a little more polished and better put together in terms of that, but there's a lot of weird caveats um, and other systems that people might not find appealing. So it's hard for me to advise, mm-hmm. but if you do like Lovecraft stuff and you're interested in a game that isn't entirely cliche but delves deep into that um, type of lore, mm-hmm. absolutely we're checking it out. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, I played it on Switch. Of course, you go with the graphical um, sacrifice. Of course, mm-hmm. I was playing it on the full-fledged one, so I was playing it on TV upscaled. It still looks fine. Um, mm-hmm. Just missing a few particle effects. Mm-hmm. The PS4 is obviously shinier, more Vaseline. Smeared on the screen right. on the PS4 version, <laughs> but um, but pretty cool stuff. So yeah. All right. So that seems like a perfect time to go ahead and plug the channels before we okay. get into the main uh, news bracket. 
Mr. Josh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, Instagram and Twitters at Joshiro Joestar and YouTube at Shiro Play 5. There you go, Ms. Mally. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at awesome underscore Mally. Um, and that's about it. <clears throat> All right. right now. And um, Solo, where can people on social media you'd like to share <laughs> uh, keep up with you <laughs> and all your uh, shenanigans on the internet? You can find me as Solo Grayson on any social media I have, so Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I'm also, I have a Star Wars podcast called Who Talks First? And I have a D&D podcast called uh, We Could Be Heroes. There you go. So definitely check those out. Those will be linked below, of course. Those are really cool. Are, uh, on those ones, uh, those are the ones with Cortu. Is she still going by that? Am I, am I using a very dated handle? Is Cortu not a thing anymore? No, she doesn't use that anymore. She just mm. we she goes by like CT or Courtney. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, all right, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's one of those things where I'm still using terminology for when I first started uh, following you guys ages ago. So I'm just like, is this? Right. Am I hip still? Is this a? Is, is this <laughs> a, a, a? They're calling them still. I remember back in my day, they were called these. Back so, back um, but yeah, no, it's it's, yeah, it's just crazy how long it's been. Me and Court have the. Me and Court do the Star Wars podcast together, and the D and D one is through some other friends that I met in cosplaying. Cool. Yeah, I'm. A, I've been listening to it lately. I'm on episode seventeen right now. So I've been listening to that after I finished uh, doing the second re-listen of the balance arc for Adventure Zone. So I've been no slowly giving that a, a listen. Uh, you Are you really? Yeah, I, I have been listening to it. And oh, you were actually the person that got me into Adventure Zone, by the way, seeing all your taco cosplays. So I decided oh. to check it out. So, yeah. This is so sweet. Yeah, you're the fucking this reason. This is so sweet and unexpected. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's, it's been crazy, like, because uh, Josh and I uh, were recently roommates again, but we were roommates before in the past, and uh, yeah, no, it was like, whenever y'all dropped that Gangnam Style video back into that Korra Gangnam Style video, that was when we first, <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's, it's amazing going back in time like that, but yeah, um, no, it, it makes me realize how long we've been following y'all on social media, so it's really cool to have you on here and talk shop about random shit that's been happening because yeah. it's one Aww. of those things where going from like a like really far we've been fans for a while yeah basically <laughs> and not trying to Aww. overdo it on a <laughs> well, yeah. because we're on a certain entertainment medium I know, but um, right? yeah no but it's been really cool so yeah 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 that's... well thanks I'm, I'm just I'm really happy to hear that you're at least giving the we could be heroes a try because like I don't know. It's really, em- I don't know. I get really embarrassed when people listen to that because yeah. I'm like trying to do character voices mm. for it, but it's also really sweet. And and yeah. don't worry about that. Josh has showed me some people that aren't as good at doing character voices, so it's a tough, it's a tough mantle to pick up. It like, can be. It, it, there's, there's also tweaking to go around. For sure. Absolutely. Because you, you start mm. off with something and then maybe it doesn't fit and mm-hmm. then you kind of have to peek it um as hey, as long as i'm not fucking merle okay at least I don't <laughs> drop my character voice all the time. it's like please please do the character voice <laughs> oh, what does he sound like yeah. <laughs> it's not merle. It's not it's merle, like, dad it's all like hey, could you do a character voice uh let me go check it out no nope, that's not it <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely not it yeah at, at least at least he got better about it though so, yeah as no, that went on like, it's hard, but they all got better. Yeah, for oh, yeah. sure. Uh, Adventure Zone's so good. I love it. <laughs> I'm excited. Balance is so good. Guys. Balance is great. Um, so it's It just kind of sucks that I don't think they'll ever have an arc like that, because they really captured lightning in a bottle with that one. They, they fucking did. Yeah. But at least, as long as I keep doing the live shows with those boys, <laughs> I'll still keep listening. Have they? I, I know the... The recent few they've done... I haven't listened to the recent one, but I know a few. They've been one-shots. So I don't know if they've done any recently with, with those characters. Really? Yeah. Um... Oh, no. I am a little <laughs> far behind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's been a no, while. I'm worried. Don't yeah. let Taco die. Don't let Taco die. Yeah, Taco's the best character, hands down. <laughs> mm. 
All right, Anyways, so to avoid yeah. spoilers, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, look, Mega Ran and uh, Wooly liked my tweet that I was. I I, I, I tweeted at uh, I, I tweeted at Wooly about the um, new uh, Leroy. Uh, Leroy Smith. Smith song that Mega Ran dropped. Yeah. And so I, I, was, I was showing it to Wooly and then. Oh, uh, Mega Ran did that. Him, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, him and Ran both uh, liked my tweet. But, um. Leroy looks like such an awesome character. Dude, he looks so badass. I like how he basically is just old man Wooly. I really hope Wooly <laughs> yeah. looks like that when he gets older. I mean, he will. He almost can't help it. But, uh, that's great. Uh, okay, so, going into the news, because. Holy fuck. <laughs> I didn't realize how long we've, that this has been a thing. Uh,. No, it's fine. We're, we're still on track to be a regular episode, because it mostly is. Okay, so... Um, Stay focused! Bioshock 4 was announced recently, and um, a, another one of those wary, because, again, the studio that made Bioshock super dead. Like, yeah. they, mm. 2K in 2K fashion uh, killed them off a long time ago. They released a few different games since then. City of Brass is alright, and um, a couple other things. I forgot that was a thing. But, yeah... Um, but the thing that I'm, not just being a different studio, which I believe the studio now, apparently it started development a while back. Normally, I roll my eyes at those and go like, oh yeah, development means you wrote it on a piece of paper on a sticky note like 12 years ago, mm -hmm. then you're finally <laughs> working on it and you're going to be like, 12 years in the making. And it's just like, no, <laughs> like how long have you actually been working on the game? But apparently, and uh, from what they did say, it seems like they have been working on it in for a while now. Um, it's been in the works for since about 2015 really um it was originally titled on their end to keep it private project parkside and it was originally um being picked it was originally started by austin texas based studio um certain affinity mm. but it's since been passed on to another studio called cloud chamber so now they've announced recently that it's been revealed as bioshock 4 uh, i have a few uh, other than the studio change my other concern is Bioshock Infinite, I'm not a fan of. A lot of people... And technically it um, wasn't Bioshock hate, 3. Exactly. <laughs> and a lot of people have a thing where they kind of... Uh, there's that point too, but... Yeah. So I would always, in the game forums, whether it's on NeoGAF or whatever, would get a lot of flack whenever I'd be like, I didn't like Bioshock Infinite. Or like that. Here's the thing. Bioshock Infinite wasn't a bad game. It was a bad Bioshock game because it pretty much didn't really have much to do with the Bioshock world or was not Bioshock-like. And well, even the lead developer at the time admitted yeah. it wasn't a Bioshock game when they first started development on it. But then 2K was like, hey, what is that? And they were like, brand new IP. And they were just like, nah, Bioshock. fuck that. Bioshock makes money. Mm -hmm. You need to tweak that to become a Bioshock game, even though that's not your They were like, intent. add 30 <laughs> seconds in the end of it. That yeah. makes a Bioshock. Okay, good. Go. Yeah, yeah, basically, and that's why it's so disconnected from the rest of the series, is it really wasn't... Ha, plug. Uh, it wasn't intended... Oh, I didn't do my plugs. Anyway, I'll do it at the end. Uh, it wasn't intended to be a Bioshock. You know what? It's going to bug me. I'm going to keep thinking about it. Uh, so, you can find me <laughs> on the internet at... This is... <laughs> what a fucking mess. You can find me on the internet at most places at, at handle uh, ZD Rocker. Uh, you can find all my stuff at slimasianentertainment.com. And you can find all current, pre uh, what the hell, past, yeah. present, and future episodes yeah. of Disconnected Cast at disconnectedcast.com. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, this is how you know who really listens to the right. podcast. Right, there you go. So many uh, emails. So many, so many. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah, Bioshock Four a little wary because the last one wasn't a great Bioshock game, wasn't even a Bioshock game, yeah. and then this one's being handled by a different studio because Two K fired everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, Solo, much uh, time or experience with the Bioshock series? So uh, I've never p played them, but I have sat on the couch while other people played them. Mm -hmm. um, except for I think Bioshock Two, I've played, mm. I've seen Bioshock One, and I've I've played Infinite as well. Mm -hmm. Or did made all the decisions in the game. That's oh, what I've man. done. <laughs> but I can't fucking play shooters. Any game that is like your first person and you have like a gun, and I can't to, fucking play it. If I have to be first person and aim, this isn't gonna happen. Mm. Yeah, it's not gonna fucking happen. So I sit there and I make somebody else play it, and I go, I'm gonna make the choices here. <laughs> Mallory, oh sorry, go ahead, Josh. Oh, you yeah. you you talk first. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was. Uh, I was going to say, Bioshock Infinite was actually the first one that I played. Oh! Um, but I remember the controls being a bit weird when I was playing. They were very weird. Yeah. And then I went and played Bioshock 1, never 
finished it, but... Did uh, you play the uh, original one, or did you play the remastered one? I think it was the original... 360? Uh, or uh, PS3? It was oh, on PC. PC. Yeah. Okay. I remember it being difficult. It was very difficult. Yeah. Mm. It's actually super scary, too, later on. Yeah, because, like... Cause like scary. I have a water I would phobia, waste so. so much ammo. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> it was what people forget was an actual survival horror game. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. that's what it started. That's what was so weird about Infinite. It's like, what is this? Because yeah. the original one... It Infinite was, just um, felt like a shoot 'em up yeah. It was. And it basically yeah. was. Uh, yeah. With superpowers. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is, with Bioshock 1 and 2 especially, or especially Bioshock 1, is it was influenced by System Shock 2, which is a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a horror FPS from back 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 in the day yeah. Mm-hmm. um so yeah, yeah. Uh, mallard do you have any experience with uh, i played bioshock one and two and infinite mm-hmm. i did not like infinite i remember mm-hmm. um i me and my brother were playing together um like when i would get tired he would play and then when he'd get tired i play mm-hmm. um didn't like it because it wasn't like bioshock one at all booker didn't catch fall. yeah thanks <laughs> i remember being terrified of bioshock one yeah, and like, being really into it, because mm. I love horror games, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Bioshock 4. Yeah, it's one I'm of those worried. things where so many of these sequel decisions have either come out of the blue, and I'm super happy because no one asked for it, but it's for a good game, mm-hmm. so I'm just like, the fact that this wasn't prodded by sales figures means yeah. that it's a passion project, and I'm hyped, and then there's other ones where it's just like, this makes buku bucks, right? We're losing all these franchises, like, you know, they're going to kill off Valborn because that made zero dollars, mm-hmm. and then they're just mm-hmm. like, okay, well, we're going to bring back Bioshock, get high. It was the same thing with Borderlands 3, like, where did that come from? Like, there was yeah. no, there was no real, and again, I love Borderlands 2, but Borderlands 3, I still stick by my, you know, it's fine, you know, yeah. review of it, but... It was just, it was uncalled for. And again, it aged poorly. God, the humor in that was just not yeah, great. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. And when are they going to make a new um, Silent Hill game? Never, Never. because Konami <laughs> Never. sucks. Uh, unless you're making, unless it's going to be a pachinko machine, you're not going to Oh, they've made one. Silent Hill pachinko they machines. Have. Yeah. Yep. In fact, uh, yeah, I was going to were... say, they've only made, they only make them as arcade stuff now, which yeah. is right. yeah. so I mean, sad. Gambling things. Think about the way Konami goes. At least they just bypass the thing, and instead of putting it in children's games like everyone else, they just made, straight up make up <laughs> gambling machines. But, look at the stuff they've dropped recently. First, they did Metal Gear Survive. Yeah. Jesus, what a fucking shit show. The fact that you had to pay for more than one save slot in that game. Uh, and then, on top of that, you also had the issue with... The new Castlevania game sounded cool by announcement mm-hmm. premise, mm-hmm. which was, oh, classic remixes of awesome Castlevania songs that you grew up with, new takes on them, um, different characters throughout the series, all together in one game. It's a mobile game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a mobile game that's probably going to free to play and have a bunch of malicious microtransactions. Mm-hmm. And so, As much as I fucking love Silent Hill, and I do, because I love horror games. Again, oh, absolutely. can't Silent play them. Hill. I'm a chicken. Mm-hmm. But, like... The indie scene is so good for horror games that yeah. right now that I don't even think if they put out a Silent Hill, it could, like, match. Yeah. Right. It, it's mm-hmm. kind of not really uh, necessary anymore. It's sad to say. Yeah. But it almost isn't necessary because, yeah, there's al- there's been a lot of uh, Silent Hill-influenced games and, and uh, stuff yeah. that you could almost consider spiritual successors that have done it so well that instead of risking Konami fucking it up, it's almost better to just play one of those indie developers' games yeah. and support it. Uh, the thing that was so brilliant about Silent Hill versus Resident Evil back in the day, I remember, is like I was always more of a mm-hmm. Resident Evil guy. I still am, just because I like I preferred that style more. Um, but it was so cool because they were both so different. You know, mm-hmm. Silent Hill with its psychological horror versus Resident yeah. Evil with its more in-your-face, straight-up black and white zombie horror. Yeah. Um, with your jump scares and your weird creatures chasing after you. Um, mm. If I could see a franchise come back from the dead, though, from Capcom's vault, there's two of them, actually. One is Rival Schools. I think that if a fighting game needs another wind, it was definitely mm-hmm. that. And the other one is Dino Crisis. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to say yep, Dino Crisis. Because I absolutely love Dino Crisis. I, I remember I, her name's apparently Regina, but when I was growing up, I always pronounced it Regina because that name made more sense yeah. to me. But according to the devs, just like Keistus... Apparently it's Regina, so I've never heard. That's Regina. a weird way yeah. for me to say it. I also feel like someone might misunderstand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah that's not that's not real. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just go with Regina. But I would love to see her come back, especially because Dino Crisis Three was horseshit. And it was a weird sci-fi 
space mm. flying jetpack shoot 'em game, which was weird. <laughs> um, but Dino Crisis one and two were pretty badass. I'll never forget when I first go into the, the one room and the stupid T-Rex shows up for the first time and I shit myself because, like, it was so goddamn scary. And, uh, it's good. And it had all... It was basically just Resident Evil with dinos for anyone who never played it. It really played this tank controls, limited ammo. But those games, Silent Hill and Resident Evil and the Resident Evil-like games at the time, were so fucking mm -hmm. hard to yeah. beat. You actually had mm -hmm. to remember mm -hmm. codes and write yeah. them down because it didn't have an auto-updating journal. Yeah. I remember um, Vincent yeah. and I LP Dino Crisis. We got really far in it, but then we got stuck eventually, like 13 episodes in, because it doesn't hold your hand at all. No. Mm -mm. Sometimes you walk by a room a million times and you're like, oh shit, there was a door on that side. I didn't even fucking see that door. Fuck. Yeah, I remember having to look up walkthroughs for Resident yeah. Evil Director's Cut. Yeah, back some in the of them fucking brutal. But yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I would love to see it come back, but Solo does have a really good point. There's so yeah. many good indie everything, not just horror. There's so many. That's why There's I just so love it more. I've been playing more indie games. It's not just to be a hipster, it's just for so much less money than AAA games. Yeah. You're able to get a lot of badass they're experiences. Ba I feel like they're just a lot better than the AAA games that they are. They are a lot better. Yep. It's really great. You know, just stuff coming out like The Tourist, Killer Queen Black, and all that stuff. It's just. It's amazing how good something can be when. When the target goal is not to sell it. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> not to when it's money. just to make enough money to put food on the yeah, table, yeah. and that's about it. Not to have private jets and, yeah. you know, pay fucking yeah. meet, Bobby meet Kotick quotas a bunch of those. for yeah. holiday sales. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like, I, I don't under... I mean, I do understand because it's greed and capitalism and whatever, but, like... Don't why spend all this money making something if you don't give a shit about what you're making? Yeah, yeah, it's really a you shame. <clears throat> yeah, it's like there's no soul anymore. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of indie projects and some of my most beloved ones, my beloved franchise Shovel Knight has finally come to <laughs> wrap up. So over the last seven years, and I had to think about it because I own mm. like eight copies of Shovel Knight because I bought them on every console. From back in the Wii U, 3DS, <laughs> PS4, Xbox One, Damn. PC, and now my Switch. Uh, that wasn't 8, I know, mm -hmm. but that was called hyperbole. Um, it's one of those things where I, I played them all, and what they did is over time, they released expansions mm -hmm. to the main game, and then they also did new updates where, you know, one with the Plague Doctor and so on and so forth. And then they recent, their last two entries finally came out in the last month, and mm -hmm. it was a card game, which was actually really cool. And a little platformer fighting game. Mm. And those are going to wrap up the five games that came out over the last seven years. Which when you think about that and how well put together those games are, that's not a bad thing. The fact that this indie studio, because all that's all the Yacht Club has done so far is their Shovel Knight stuff. They have that um, new Shovel Knight spinoff one coming out. Mm. But that's not part of this, what they call the Treasure Trove Collection. Mm. Ah. But they started it over the last few years and it was really cool because... When I bought the game back in fucking, you know, God 20, whenever the fuck, uh, 2012, um, I got it for $15 because at the time it was just going to be Shovel Knight mm -hmm. after the Kickstarter and that was it. Mm -hmm. Then they were just like, okay, we're going to start, we now have this like, I hate to call it a roadmap because that's what we always talk about when we're talking yeah. about nonsense like Fallout 76 <laughs> and whatever, but they were basically like, I have an actual road, we have an actual roadmap of... Shovel Knight stuff we'd like to drop in terms of more lore expanding content and then eventually maybe some other spin off games. Mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and buy it now because we're going to eventually raise the price to 20 bucks. Then the price went up to 19.99. Then they were just like, all right, you, see, you got all really seem to like this and now even more people bought it at 20 bucks. Mm. So go ahead and buy it now because as of X date, it's going to become 40 bucks because we are going to, like, we're adding, like, four more games to this shit. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, get in there now because you can buy them piecemeal at about 10 to $15 a piece, depending on which one you got. The package overall costs like, like well over 40 bucks, but mm -hmm. they're basically like, you know, you better buy this now because whatever. But anyways, all the copies I bought back then are up to date to what they have now because ever since then, um, even though I've bought the more expensive versions now on Switch and stuff because that's the only option I had at the time, they still honored all the way back from when I got that post Kickstarter copy mm -hmm. to now, that one still has all the content. Mm -hmm. And I just love when developers support them. They're like, you guys were the reason this even launched. Mm -hmm. And we dumped this much more money into it. But yeah. anyways, yeah, I'm a huge Shovel Knight mark. You know, so happy 
uh, to get my Shovelland Amiibo, which is now reselling for a lot. I'm not going to sell it. I'm just saying that thing's yeah. gone up. Like <laughs> That was a limited press because it was amazing that even happened. Mm. And I Shovel Knight plush and all that shit. Although this one Shovel Knight cosplayer was kind of a dickhead. But he? he's just a cosplayer, so <laughs> fuck him. Oh, wait! What, that's what, I meant. <laughs> what I meant was, that guy, fuck him. That was, wow, that was a... <laughs> That was a slip. That's not what I meant. I didn't mean fuck cosplayers. I meant fuck that guy and how he snubbed me. Oh, no. Yeah. That was... Uh, I just love so the So Shovel Knight is wrapping up after seven years. Uh, five games in the collection. You guys should totally check that out. Um, Outer Worlds is making a... St- oh, right, sorry. Anyone else play Shovel Knight? Did anyone uh, Shovel Knight? I've like, watched you play Shovel Knight, but I haven't. So good. And I know Shovel Knight is like a... Some guest character in some weird A lot of game. weird games. Like, with Zubaz and Shovel Knight appear in so many... They're both yeah. in Indivisible. They're both in this, like, indie fight or whatever. Yeah, no, there's this one weird, like, anime fighting game with all and these Shovel different Knight's characters. There. Oh, I yeah. think it has it's Binding on, of Isaac. It's Binding of Isaac, and it's on yeah. Switch. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Shovel yeah. Knight's in there for some reason. Binding of Isaac's awesome. I love Binding of Isaac. Yeah, but, um... Yeah. Uh, Solo, any uh, Shovel Knight experience? I don't... I think I've ever played it myself, but I have watched the game Grumps play a lot of Shovel Knight, okay, so, so I am fond of very well Shovel aware. Knight. Yes, Shovel Knight's cool. It, I just love the silly idea of him, his, the shovel being the weapon. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Mallory? No, no. You much. definitely should. I no, know. I, just, I put it on my list for this week to put and to look, um, at, that. look at it. Yeah. See? That's a good I'm job. I'm doing a whole thing right now where You're every... keeping track of the stuff yeah. we bring up. That way I can do all that. Good. Like that's that's Rick from Rick and Morty. There, mm-hmm. see, there's my list. There you go. You made a list, and it's real. You Making didn't really list. have to show me because I trusted you. I know. Yeah. All right, but so I just wanted to show you the pretty <laughs> list that I made. Um, Outer Worlds. We talked about it before. Awesome game. It's Very obviously pretty. going to be coming out on um, Switch later next mm-hmm. year. But what they did announce um, recently is that they are going to be doing DLC for it. Uh, but it's mm. expansion. Lord DLC, not mm. Fallout 76 charge you to store your stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, right. the good thing about it is, um, yeah, no, it's going to be good support. So, okay. I, I, you know, I just didn't want them to do microtransactions, but I'm okay with expansions. I'm yeah. cool with that. Um, what I'm curious, though, now is with the fact that the game did really well and Obsidian, you know, always has a home run with their stuff, mm-hmm. and they're going to do these expansions are they going to focus on these first get them out on playstation and xbox make the switch version wait a little bit longer and just release it as a game of the year version on switch is what i'm curious Hmm. they might do because originally because they didn't know how it was going to sell expansion dlc was definitely not on the table Mm -hmm. uh at first it's just because it did so well and people want more of it um, but yeah, I mean, we now live in a world where everyone always wanted New Vegas 2. Yeah. We don't really need it now because Outer Worlds is amazing. Awesome. It's what like Fallout should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Without Fallout anymore. We really just, it really, just uh, the way Jim Sterling like, put it, it made Bethesda obsolete. Like, yeah. it yeah. just really did. Like, don't we don't we need, need them anymore. to make these. Uh, because everyone did, despite Bethesda's bullshit company politics and shenanigans, everyone went to them because they were Bethesda <clears> and they did make those. Just that kind of Bethesda RPG mm-hmm. that was different enough. It wasn't your turn-based RPGs, but it wasn't just some really bad thing like Two Worlds or mm-hmm. whatever. So it was just in that niche pocket where they're just like, it's not perfect, it's actually super broken and glitchy, mm-hmm. but I like this this kind of game, mm-hmm. whatever this is. Uh, now mm-hmm. Outer Worlds exists, and so to know Obsidian can just do it, if they do a fantasy one and knock it out of the park again... But there's a may as well actually Done. just close it down. Ooh, or just stick to being I'll a I'll play a fantasy one. Yeah, that would be really cool. The, I just... The the way that Outer Worlds post-apocalyptic world is handled is just absolutely, like, great. Like, the way... like the, Again, the example, and, and I keep bringing this one up, but the reason I really like it is just the idea that the world is so, like, corporate monetized. Mm-hmm. The fact that... Uh, mm-hmm. Suicide is considered destruction mm-hmm. of personal property, or destruction of public property, or yeah. like of property, government property is a like it's just such a good narrative like thing to be like this is the world you live in because a lot of crazy shit happens. Obsidian's games by design are pretty bleak, mm-hmm. so there's it's always the lesser of two evils in a lot of their games, mm-hmm. and Outer Worlds is no different. And so yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's really exciting. I'm very very curious to do that. I know. You always have a huge list of stuff to get to, so you eventually are interested in Outer Worlds, oh, yeah. but you haven't got to it yet, Mr. Yeah. Um, 
I've only, you know, scathed a little bit of it because, you know, Epic Game Store, that was already a terrible decision I had to make. Um, Mallory, I know you played it for sure. I've played it. Um, I really love it. Um, I'm actually diving in real deep this week since I'm still job hunting. Um, so I'm going to dive in real deep after job hunting and just get through the rest of it. And what a narrative statement that can make playing Outer Worlds after going looking for a job. <laughs> some of the political yeah. commentary that they have in that game yeah. is appropriate. Yeah. Um, Solo, how about you? Uh, more of a watch spectrum or played spectrum for Outer Worlds? For Outer Worlds, I haven't actually sat down and watched. My boyfriend loves it. I've just been having him. He would come in every morning at like 6 a.m. when I need to wake up for work and start telling me about what's happening with his, that's like, awesome. companion NPC and the <laughs> romance that's happening. Yes. <laughs> and There's I would just cool love it. I'm like, tell me more about, tell me more about your companion and her lady friend. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you brought that up, because that made me think about another thing that's awesome about Outer Worlds, that something they do that other RPGs don't do and that they could learn from, is when you play most games with, like, a faction system and stuff like that, what happens when you ask your companion what you should do, right? It's usually, like... There's always an, a good guy and bad guy side to things, so they always usually align mm -hmm. with, you know, whatever. But in Outer Worlds, some of the companions will straight up be like, there could be a faction that you fancy, mm -hmm. and they will just straight up, because of their backstory or whatever, be like, no, fuck that faction. Like, yeah. you yeah. should actually fuck them over because we can take all their resources and go do this instead and help these guys are a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they actually the, the characters actually have personality and don't just auto-align with yeah. your... Uh, characters yeah. taste or oh, what nice. you want to do they actually are opinionated mm -hmm. and it's actually really cool to go through some because some of them are pretty interesting characters because you know you could like be hanging out with one start to like them and then realize something like oh this person supports that guy Oof, like <laughs> damn i yeah. really like this character until they were a so-and-so supporter it's like yeah oh, damn it it's really deep a, yeah, so I thought that was really cool though that they That's did that because, because again, most of the time the companion always <laughs> usually plays neutral and goes, "I'm with you till the end." Yeah, you yeah. should do what you do, and I support it. Or, Here they're like, "No, yeah, fuck or that, they'll I don't be like a you. little irritated." But, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. But in this game, some of them will just straight up tell you, "I'm going to leave this party yeah. and fucking do that mission." Like I'm actually yeah. out if you do that mission. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy. Like it's it's really cool. It's that awesome. They force you to make these type of decisions where you're just like companion or doing this faction I wanted to do. Yeah. Like it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, now I don't know if they actually will really fuck off because I didn't. I ended up like liking them so much I listened to them. But right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, I, I mean, thought probably. that was really cool. Yeah, knowing that I game, that. probably yeah. I would say so. Uh, Fall and Dragon it, I, I'm sure they did it. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? that's true. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Oh God, I really hope the new Dragon Age isn't a uh, shit heap. Like, <laughs> I really hope I it's good. I, I, God, I hope it will actually happen. <laughs> yeah, I hope it will actually yeah. happen. Yeah. And then when I hope it happens, it's not Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Ugh. Um. Speaking of broken games, Fallout 76 is back in the news Bye. because Yay. <laughs> because for it's some reason they're still up, they're still updating it because for the two oh, people that, that's that's still oh, yeah. playing. Uh, and uh, the new update actually fucked the game up. Um, of course so it did. It introduced in in the already buggy and broken game uh, that has buggy and broken uh, membership. You now, when you fire your weapon, it actually fucks up your armor and stats. No, and I think actually, it's when it, you reload, or when you reload, yeah. it degradates it. Yeah. So what? yeah, when you so, reload your weapon, your yeah. armor defense decreases. Yeah. So you're bang, bang, bang. Time to reload. You know, and then your stat goes down during a time when you might need that armor. All right, yeah. like... uh, not yeah. to mention. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not to mention this includes like legendary armor and rare drops are also mm -hmm. affected by this. Yeah. So no fucking way. Oh my this god, this is such already. a shit show. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's just been an ongoing thing. You know, Anthem <laughs> has already just uh, the the, the worst just, thing Anthem's done in recent time is just lie about how they're going to fix that. Game. I'm just honestly surprised at this point there are still people playing this game. I'm some people, some people surprisingly bad. really love it, or some person. I don't know, at this point, I feel like it's just one person. Just, but, um... Just go find a different game than Plain Plain. Yeah, so... I'm so tired of what I'm hearing about Fallout I know, right? Well, we're gonna keep it brief, but that is that is an update bug. But here's the thing that made me think, though, right? With Fallout First, 
what it did was sell you a bunch of features that you wish were just in the game already. For $100. What if, Beth- what if Bethesda <laughs> goes ahead? I know, $100 annual season. Yeah. Pass. Holy... F- and it was broken. That was even worse. Fuck. Um, yeah. What if Bethesda goes, hey, that wasn't a bug. That's a new gameplay mechanic. But with Fallout first, you can stop it from happening because your armor <laughs> will not do that anymore when you're reloading. Like I, they're that I company. Can see though. It though. They're that company. I, where mean, I can just they see that. Did give uh, out masks with? Masks. Yeah, because everyone asked for mold. more storage bins. Everyone asked for all this. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did sell the mask that can kill you because of the amounts yeah. of mold in it. And the non bags that oh were bags. Yeah, I remember <laughs> we went over this with Chubbs and Bill, but I do like. Yeah, it was just funny. Like hearing Stella's reaction, just everyone is so like, yeah, what the hell? Right. You know, the canvas bag controversy, all the broken stuff, the fact <laughs> that there's no NPCs, the moldy <laughs> mask that was the the yeah the <laughs> amount the thing where there was the recall on uh, the mask because there was uh, reported amounts of mold so bad it could actually kill you. Uh, Such a dumpster fire. <laughs> it was just it's just <laughs> an, I know it's just <laughs> crazy. But that's uh, really is just like. I think they really just want to see. I think they keep seeing people on the servers, and they're just like, how? How What can can we we do to make these people (laughs) stop? It just works. What I would be doing at this point is seeing how far I can go to make people not play this game. Yeah, no kidding. It's just really, really bad. Like, Mm -hmm. god dang. Like, it's like a social experiment at this point. Yeah, it almost (laughs) seems like it. I really, like, joke about it all the time, but I think it it could be. Like, I think that's what it is at this point. (laughs) It's like, how much will you dedicate to a game that is absolute garbage? Yeah. So, um, Fallout 76 <laughs> nonsense aside, so are you much of a fan of the Fallout series, or not so much? Mm, not me. Because, again, guns. Mm. Oh, you right. Know, That's I'm just true. not very good at any type of shooters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, in that sense, in a fantasy game, what if it was, like, first mm-hmm. person with a bow? Is that different uh, no. for you? Because I tried thing? to do what is it? Uh, like an archer with a, alloy. What's that game? Oh, Horizon. Horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Zero Dawn. Yeah, yeah, it's a good game. It's a good tried. Game. I tried really hard. It looks beautiful. I want to play it, but I was like, oh, I, I can't. I fucking. The second they were like, all right, narrative training stuff done. Go. <laughs> Kill this robot. I was like, shit, I can't. The robot keeps killing me. <laughs> yeah, you have to switch weapons a lot. You in that do. Game. It's a Th- lot. That's of... kind of one thing I really like about it, though. Like diff- with the different um, type of robots that you're fighting, you use different tools, different strategies, and stuff. Yeah, it's super cool, and I love yeah. watching other people play it. And that's why, I- God bless Let's Players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, what, what, where the fuck was I going with that? I don't know. Oh, right, you guys. Hey, you two. Well, yeah. Uh, a Fallout. Like, oh. yes? A thumbs up, thumbs down? Experience of Fallout? I mean, I like... I had fun playing Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4. I like it. They were pretty good, right? Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, I've yeah. probably spent more hours playing Fallout yeah, than know, Elder Scrolls, but... And that's why... Well, me, I was more of the opposite of that, but... I did play a lot of Fallout still, and that's why I was really sad that Fallout 76 sucked so much, because I think yeah. the idea was badass. Mm-hmm playing Fallout with multiplayer. I've always thought, like, Elder Scrolls Online took years to kind of get it better, but, you know, Elder they Scrolls Online is out. fine. They figured it out. It also wasn't as big of a and dumpster Exactly, but it wasn't... A, yeah, it was just more blah at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really, like, super... It, it was a working anything. game. Yeah. yeah. But Fallout 76 was just like... It was just so disappointing how awful it was, and it was... Oof. Mallory? Uh, I mean, I watched my brother play it a lot. I, we had fun playing... Like, the way, so the way we play games is, like, if, like I said, if he gets tired, I play if... Yeah. How long I, are you guys playing it? You guys are falling asleep and passing well, it Well, it's not like that. It's like, so if we, uh, like, if I hang out with my brother and, like, that day we decide mm. we're doing, like, we're gonna sit and watch TV or, uh, play video games, like, it all depends on our mood. So, like, he loves to play games. Like, I watched him play, um, Resident Evil all the way through. But, like, if he got tired of, like, playing... He would give me the controller, and I'd yeah. play for a little bit. So we switch off, and that's just, like, how we spend time together, other than just talking shit to each other. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I watched him play all of the Fallout, uh, uh, all of the Fallout series, and then when 76 came out, like, we were talking about getting it, because, I mean, I always wanted to play Fallout with my brother mm. and making our, making our campsite and stuff, because, I mean, that was my favorite part, was literally just making shit. Um... But then all the stuff with it, and I was like, I'm not going to put my money into this. 
he put his money into some of it. Like, he bought the game. Mm. But, and he bought... Big mistake. Yeah. He bought a few other things on that game. <laughs> and, like, I mean, he still, like, loves the game. But he... How? I don't know. He definitely says that it's, like, janky and he wants a different game. So, but, he lo- but he likes it? But, he, I mean, it's just... I guess it's the, mm. the Fallout. He's a masochist? I don't know. I'm gonna give I think my it's $60 just because it's Fallout. Worth, damn it. But he did get into Outer Worlds, <laughs> so... Mm. At least there's that. Yeah. So now we can sit and do that. All right, so the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest coming out. What did you keep calling it? Ori's Adventure, I think. Which I don't know how that I, happened. I thought, it was, no, wait, I thought it was like Ori's... Ori and the Blind Forest. No. Wasn't like Ori's Awake or... Ori's Blindness? I don't know. You kind Ori of said and the it, Blind You said Forest? it was like something weird one time, and I was like, what are you... What? I thought Ori's Adventure. The Blind Ori's. I, I thought it was Ori in the Anyways. Blind Forest. It might Hold have on. been. Hold on, I'm looking this up now. Yeah, Ori in the Blind Forest. That's the first one, yeah. Yeah, Ori in yeah. the Blind Forest. So the sequel's coming out, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to come out, I think, either late this year or first quarter of next year, but it's actually been delayed to March 11th. Huh? But again, as long as the game comes out, good. There's that. It's a very beautiful game. Um, I think the fact that Xbox is always pushing kind of like, well, you know what, you don't like Xbox, how about you play these games on PC then? Like, you know, they're kind of giving you that option if you don't mm-hmm. want to invest in a console and you maybe have a PC that can run it, or yeah. you may just be a PC gamer, which is a big market and they're smart to, like, appeal to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's going to be coming around the same time as uh, Doom Eternal, Doom 64, uh, Port to Switch, and the new Animal Crossing. So I'm probably going to be a little too busy to check it out, but I'm very excited about Animal Crossing. Crossing. Yes, that's going to be really good. Oh, the amount of... Uh, is everybody here going to get Animal Crossing? Yeah. Hey, if we're all going to get Animal Crossing, hey, we're getting in on this. We're yeah. sharing friend codes and all, yeah, so... Doing all of that. Yes, there's going to be that, but Remind no. me when I get home, I need to send you my friend code. Yeah, don't worry, it's only been like a fucking... I year. know. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll do that. my friend code. Share me yours, too. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Um... Right, what was I saying? Oh, right, yeah, we're in the middle, yeah, uh-huh. And the game's, yeah, no, Animal Crossing, woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Animal Crossing's gonna be dope. No, yeah, no, Animal Crossing is a lot of fun. Oh, I was gonna say, can you imagine, for all uh, for those of you who played the one on the DS, can you imagine turning on that game now and seeing the weeds uh, and I have. what the town looks I, like I've and, done that and recently. all your favorite oh, villagers you left? Oh, yeah, no, the horror. Me and, me I can't, and my nephew. The, the Sydney Ordinance can only do so much. Basically. <laughs> oh, man. But that was the first one I got. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, okay, so mid-March, we're all going to jump back into debt with Nook and uh, yep. be on yeah. a, a yep. more island waterland type thing. Looked really cool. Yeah. I'm really sad it got delayed as long as it did, but again, if it's for polish reasons and or, you know, just as long as the game comes out solid and good, like, yeah, most, yeah. most first party Nintendos do, uh, Nintendo games mm-hmm. do, so I'm, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. There's going to be that. Um, Death Stranding, recent update, uh, can change the text size, so when you're as old as me, you can... Fire that shit up and turn that shit into <laughs> size 20 font nice. and finally be able to read and uh, go from there. Um, normally, yeah. if it wasn't so heavily tied to the uh, PlayStation and everything, mm. I'd be like, maybe Switchboard's coming because a lot of stuff that's doing text scaling has been confirmed for the Switch. It'd be interesting. Yeah. But I believe they are really pushing it hard for like, they announced that a PC thing's coming in about a year. A PC port is confirmed in about a year, but nothing about any of the other consoles. I believe they're actually mm-hmm. calling it a console exclusive, mm-hmm. so. Not the first time it hop ship though. We've had True. console exclusives yeah. like Tomb Raider go to yeah. the other platform, mm-hmm. so. Um, yeah. There's that, but it'll be interesting. Death Stranding, still a very polarizing, in the West, a very polarizing mm-hmm. game. In Japan, it was like a mm-hmm. smash hit, like perfect yeah. score. But here in the West, people either really love it or really hate it still. For some people, it's one of the most fun, different games they've played. For others, they're like, this is the most boring UPS simulator I've <laughs> ever played. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Mads uh, Mikkelsen, of course, winning an award for best acting performance mm-hmm. in a game. Yeah. Mads deserves mm-hmm. it for a lot of reasons, but apparently his performance in Death Stranding is... Good, but according to Pat, pretty, like, underused. Uh, mm. Apparently, his character, when he's in, the few scenes he's in is amazing, mm. but not in as much as you would have liked to see him mm. in. Uh, you have more mm. stuff with Fragile and those awkward scenes. I'm not so fragile. Not yes, so. we get it. Your name's Fragile, but you're a tough character. Thanks, okay, fragile. stop saying stop that. It. It's a constant, Wow. Geez, hey. I'm not so fragile. Yes, fragile. you're not fragile. 
<laughs> Let's test this out, fragile. Yeah, yeah. But, um, seems aside... like yeah, seems like you're a little sensitive, though. Yeah, seems like you're a little <laughs> fragile in the emotions department. Oh, yeah, no, it seems but, like. Uh, I yeah. Hope you're not <laughs> Uh, Amazon Amazon Games is going to be releasing an MMO. For mm. those, of course, who aren't familiar with Amazon Games uh, gaming department, they're not a bunch of noobs. They were actually a studio called Double Helix, mm-hmm. uh, who is known for oh, okay. primarily, uh, in recent times, the Killer Instinct uh, yeah. reboot that happened a few years ago on Xbox One and now PC. Um, so they were acquired by Amazon a few years ago, and this is going to be one of their first major releases since being renamed to Amazon, uh, games, but it's an MMO, Mm. so... Interesting. Not usually the easiest task to take on. Mm. I remember watching a, uh, Kickstarter crap video of iDubs, where he made fun of a guy who had a Kickstarter that was just like... Uh, yeah, you know, I want to make a sandbox post-apocalyptic MMO. Sounds simple, right? And iDubs was just like, that sounds like actually, that's like literally the most like not simple mm-hmm. thing you could ever attempt in video game design. <laughs> a sandbox MMO? Yeah. Do you know the logistics of running that? Not just an MMO, yeah. but one where you can alter the world and yeah. like fucking do all this crazy shit. No! Like, if a, if a, you know, I mean, Fallout 76 wasn't a thing at a time, at the time, but if it had been, I would have said, if Bethesda can't do it with their millions of dollars, you can't, you can't do it with your, like, $50,000 Kickstarter. Yeah. Which we talked yeah. about Oscar on the last episode, we had a game dev on mm-hmm. last time, and we talked to them about how budgeting for a game is insanity, mm-hmm. because it always ends up costing mm-hmm. way more than you think it does. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So... But I do like the fact that he did talk about how despite that, though, even he felt that some games are still overpriced at 60 despite the cost and development that goes in them. Yeah. If you look at the size of the studio, they could probably still afford to sell it at something not 60 yeah. But that's a whole other thing. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be coming out um, May 2020 uh, from the Amazon um, digital store. I've never bought a game from Amazon, so shrug <laughs> how that... How that fucking works. But it's also going to come out on Steam. So okay. for for human beings who play games on PC. <laughs> human uh, beings. Yeah, right. Okay, well, Steam. All right. <laughs> so Steam yeah. works. Um, but yeah, no, interesting. Very ambitious. Um, not the most original looking. It looks mm. like a cross. It, so it looks like it's almost like Elder Scrolls wearing a Dark Souls mask in terms of aesthetics. Where it doesn't mm. quite look as gritty as Dark Souls. Mm. It almost looks like like the devs at Bethesda trying to make a Dark Souls game. Yeah. Like, like it's weird. It's kind of going for that very proper, yeah. not silly fantasy, but yeah. not quite too serious fantasy. It's weird. I'll show you the screenshots later. But it, it's, mm. eh, you know. Yeah. Um, Sports story. I was very excited about this announcement recently. Uh, there was a game that came out on Switch last in the last year called uh, Golf Story, which originally I was just like, okay, what the hell? I'm not gonna. What it is? It's a really awesome JRPG influenced RPG mm. that is based around the world and aesthetics of sports, but dives you into a world of using those skills in an RPG-like world. So, a uh, sports story is going to expand beyond just golf, but for example, in the first game, Golf Story, uh, 1499 on the uh, Switch eShop, uh, these are Switch-exclusive games, by the way, okay. so if you have a Switch, you can check them out. That's the only way you can check them out. Um, this mm-hmm. sequel is also going to be Switch-exclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so you go around, and like you're doing your like little exploration and smashing a rock to get into a dungeon or doing uh, almost like a mm-hmm. Zelda-style exploration of stuff, but you're using a golf club, or in this new one, you're going to be using a baseball bat or a basketball. And, it, and when you go into combat similarly mm-hmm. try to incorporate sports into whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very conscious of how silly it is, so it's used very clever sometimes, or kind of funny in a way, and even the description of the games will be say something like, you know, who would have thought you could use sports in, like, so many yeah. u- you know, useful ways and when you're exploring a dungeon or, you know, trying to find some rare item. Uh, but very interesting idea, and they take a lot of tried-and-true um, stuff, again, with your dungeon-crawling Zelda influences, as well as their own unique stuff and the <coughs> whole idea of sports. So, very cool game. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Very excited to... Uh, have that be announced as a sequel because it was a game that I barely heard about before that announcement and not many people I know, if anyone I know, has even heard of the first one. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I only came to light of it only recently because I saw a tweet about it and I guess they were probably 
talking about it because that was going to be announced. But yeah, no, so mm. that should be really cool. And again, very cool price points, fourteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Lots of game. I'm assuming the sequel will be similarly priced, so we'll see from there. Um, so that's a good thing. Let's talk about a piece of shit. Okay. Uh, Cliffy B, uh, oh, no. uh, Cliffy B, uh, proclaimed uh, and well known piece of shit in the video game industry. He's um, he's come out on social media again, and uh, he's a ranting and a raving, and he's basically like. He's doing some really weird thing where... So he went away because he realized he doesn't know how to make video games. When he was with Epic Games, he made Gears of War. Obviously, very popular franchise. Uh, and arguably, a beloved game series that apparently the last one's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, after he left Epic Games and formed his own studio, which was called uh, Boss Key, mm. did a couple of failed mm-hmm. games, uh, most infamously Lawbreakers, which he um, claimed was going to be this, like... Overwatch killing oh, like I heard good, like didn't know that like, was him. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. And that game <clears throat> literally died before it could get off the ground. It like died in early access. Yeah. It was such a <laughs> fucking sink and was broken and shitty. Uh, then yeah. that's when he went insane and basically fired all his employees at oh, Bosky yeah. uh, and then lied about paying them severance. Um, for to, ca- to catch those up, he. Uh, was on Twitter and basically said, yo, it's a shame my studio closed down. Glad I paid everybody a decent severance package mm-hmm. where a lot of employees openly spoke out on social media and said, what severance package? <laughs> you didn't pay us fuck all. You paid us actually nothing. And Cliffy B's response mm-hmm. to that was, well, I'd like to think I did. So, oh. aside not having a I'd concept... I'd like to think <laughs> about my foot up your ass. How's that sound? <laughs> so... Aside not understanding how money works, um, Cliffy B <laughs> obviously doesn't know how video games work. Oh, and another douchey thing he did as a follow-up to show that he's still cool with the employees is he showed up awkwardly right. to an employee's yeah, wedding oh, yeah. and like was like selfieing <clears throat> it up and That's being so like, see, I'm here, I, I'm a good boss. That's so awkward. Uh, no one here. I think knows I'm here or, or supposed to be here, but don't pay attention to that part. Check me out. Look, I'm taking awkward selfies with the with the groom. Look at this. Look, oh, he doesn't look like he knows who I am. Uh, and uh, there's a bunch of other people who don't know who I am in the reception. It was a weird mess. Mm-hmm. Then he got into that Twitter exchange with Pat from Castle Super Beast, in which Pat's things were just getting so many retweets and responses, and Cliffy B's were like getting nothing. And Cliffy B was basically like, Who is this nobody? Someone who's clearly more popular than you. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so he went away. He retired. It's not much of a retirement when you actually have no job and have no choice. You're uh, but, okay, unemployed game dev Cliffy B uh, decided to retire. But he's spoken uh-huh. up after the VGAs. He, he's inspired again. And, mm. man, he wants to come back. Um, he knows that no. everyone's been missing him. He wants to get back in there. He said he's been itching. <laughs> he said he's been itching to get back into the games industry. He said he doesn't care. Not that he does. Not that he needs the job because this guy is fucking rich out the ass. But you know, not uh, that he needs. But he said he doesn't even care if he's writing, writing for video games, programming, sketching. It doesn't matter. He just, he just has so much passion. Not debt. Passion, passion. built up inside <laughs> of him, and and he wants to get back in there. Uh, to which he also made a snide, unprovoked remark of, I mean, trust me, I'm not going to be some fucking YouTuber streamer. I'm too old for that shit. And I'm just like, where did that mm. slight come from? Yeah. You just decided to slight content creators out of left field like yeah. while you're doing this un- <laughs> unwanted comeback announcement? There's no demand for him to come back. No. His last game was a flop. He hasn't been involved in Gears of War in a long time, in which the last time he was involved, that's when the series started going downhill. So... Mm. You know, so he does all this weird shit, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, he's just doing this faux passion thing and being like, you know, I just miss the industry. I just blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, dude, I'm just like, (laughs) fuck you, man. I'm just like, what the, like... Just stay away. (laughs) Shoo. Yeah, yeah. Shoo, 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 shoo. Get a spray bottle back. You miss it. It doesn't miss you. <laughs> exactly. And that's just one of those things where it's just like, it was just such a weird, out of nowhere, like, no one was like tweeting at him being like, yo, bro, when are you coming back with that yeah. new hotness? And when are you dropping? Never, you? because no one wants it. And like, I don't know, it was just weird. And then again, it's a bit ironic he decided to make that like, 
you know, stand up comedian wisecrack about yeah. like content creators. Because if anyone was mm-hmm. going to have a choice of bringing him or a chance of him getting some influence yeah. to come back, it probably would have been some YouTubers who were going to be, or streamers who were going to be like, uh, hey, like, Gears of War, I love that shit, man. Well, I'm going to start streaming Gears to try to get some hype going. Like, you know, well, yeah. you know, maybe if you come yeah. out with a game, together. you'll, you know, hit me up with a demo code and I'll, like, you know, push your shit. But no. Yeah. Instead, he, instead of pushing his shit, he's going to be getting his shit pushed in yeah. because now no one's really going to want him back because he's already shit-talking. Like, shit-talking is what got him into exile. And now, like, he's coming back while still committing the same sin that got him banned to begin with. It's just like he has no like grasp of reality and where his place is in the world. Well, like Cliffy B, he can do anything. Come on, guys. I know that is how he feels. <laughs> he sounds as bad as the uh, San Japan guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, they should say him. Randy Pitchford <laughs> and Cliffy B should all start a con together and, right. and develop a video game for a con. Oh no, that would be the fucking cringiest shit ever. <laughs> Alrighty, main topic time. Before we get in there, make sure that if you have any questions or comments, and if you just want to get mad at something that happened earlier in the episode, hit us up at disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. Once again, that's disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com, and you can talk to us about stuff like the following. So, um, Xbox finally announcing their whole um, you know name, mm-hmm. the Xbox Series X. Yes. Not the great, wow. not not the greatest naming convention. <laughs> You, so this is the thing, right? You have PlayStation on one hand who doesn't even bother to try to be yeah. creative. They're just like, one, two, yeah. three, four, five. If it ain't and, broke, and, 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 work. and they recently did trademark six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I think we know where they're going with the naming convention for the next uh, <laughs> few consoles. Uh, then you have Xbox, who at least tries. You get the like, little gold you tried star. Yeah. But it's all been such a mess. You know, you have... Xbox. Okay, fine. Whatever. I forgot why they called it that. There was a story behind that. I forgot what it was. Uh, mm-hmm. Phil Spencer always tells it and I always forget. But there was a, like at least an interesting reason they called it the Xbox. Yeah. Then the 360 and people were just like... Why? Uh, why? Yeah. The 360. Then they were just like, okay, people didn't like the 360. Okay, uh, oh, the one. one. And now they at least gave an explanation for the one. The one, the reason it was called the Xbox One is it was supposed to be the one... Thing where it was like your set-top, because you could actually run your set-top box through it if you had cable. Yeah. Uh, it was supposed uh-huh. to be your streaming box, your gaming console, mm-hmm. your, all, your, my right, your MP3 player, <laughs> your Blu-ray player. Yeah. This all in one yeah. um, ecosystem. Home media it was thing. a... Your PlayStation. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, a station <laughs> where one plays. Yeah. Mm. So it was a noble mm. idea, and at least they had an explanation for why they called it that. But when it's already not your first console, yeah. and it's also not your second <laughs> console, a bit weird. Then they did the subversions, yeah. the Xbox One S, as well as the Xbox One X. And so that just got weird with the sub, like, namings. And then the Xbox... One S all digital or the X Bone sad, um, and then now at the game of video game awards they go ahead and reveal that the next Xbox one is series. going to be called the Xbox Series X. Bad name aside, the idea is noble because it's more of a gaming PC than it is a console. Uh, in the sense that this is actually a, uh, where they wanted to go with the Xbox One X to begin mm-hmm. with, but instead. They went ahead and released that one as it was, and this new one is supposed to basically... I mean, if you've seen the picture of it, it's a big, weird, like... Yep. Looks like an uh, avant-garde PC, yeah. like, case. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. It's going to have your swappable components. It's going to have upgradable... It's going to start with your basic tier, which Lord knows what that price point is going to start at. I don't think the PS5 or the Xbox Series X has announced price points yet, but... People are thinking it may even be in the six hundred range, if not more, because of the specs. Damn. Because of the specs, it's touting on top of being able to do uh, ray tracing, four K bullshit. Games now can't even run at over thirty frames on console yeah. in, in most cases. So I think they should probably master ten eighty sixty FPS first before promising all this <laughs> crap. But solid state drives. It's gonna have. Some bells, and it's going to have some whistles. But, unfortunately, it's going to be paid in full through the uh, consumer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, now, of right. course, let's go back in our little time machine where people did forget. I had to explain this to some dude who was super young at work. Now, when the PS3 first came out, that shit was 600 bucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it wouldn't be the first $600 console. And that's not even to consider back in the 80s and 90s taking inflation into an account how much those consoles mm-hmm. were at the time. That aside, the PS3 was already super expensive. It flopped. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. in, in the current time, where we do live in the age of the $1,000 flagship smartphone... Perhaps a six hundred dollar console wouldn't be great on your wallet, but I think it's awesome. honestly a, a price point, a sadly feasible price point. I think I could see them costing at least six hundred, and they seem to be doing versions where they're going to start with your basic version and your expanded versions. Because before announcing the name of the console, they already did say what was called at the time Project Scarlet mm-hmm. was going to have your entry level version without a disc drive and stuff like that, and then slightly. Slightly gimped specs, and then your mega version with all the bells and whistles and stuff like that, which is what they were showing at the thing. Now, they also showed that they have a big interest in PC crossplay mm. because with the Xbox One, they have done um, a lot of crossplay between PC and them because Microsoft obviously has a stake in PC as well. And they also mm-hmm. did release a lot of their flagship titles, which were always chained to the Xbox console that are now playable on PC, whether it's through Steam or uh, Windows Store. So they've always been trying to go into that, like, kind of foray into PC gaming meets console gaming. Um, I think it's a good idea if you can't afford a gaming PC to spec. Let's just say a gaming PC of the same caliber costs that much more. Um, but you have obviously the flexibility of it being a proper computer. I could see it kind of being an interestingly viable thing where you're like, well, for 600 bucks, it may not be able to do Photoshop and all that shit, but I can do all the gaming that X, like $1,000 gaming PC can do in a $600 starting form. And I can update my components, take out this, you know, terabyte, uh, solid state drive and add a two terabyte one. Like the fact that they are going to make it hot swappable instead of like, Josh has a lot of personal experience with trying to switch out the hard drive in a uh, PS4. PS4. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, noble ideas. Xbox, as I've always given credit for in the years I've been doing this, has always been kind of leading the way in the tech department. I mean, PlayStation really has learned and adopted a lot of stuff once Xbox has kind of tried and tested it. Um, That being said, it is a very, as it is an experimental console, a very... Not, they don't know what the target audience is because now you're in a weird thing where you're like, you got to get PC people to maybe care about this, if, especially if they're trying to upgrade or have yeah. a sub PC, or you're trying to get console people to care about stuff that PC people normally care about. Does the average mm-hmm. console Call of Duty player give a fuck about swappable components? Yeah, Do they know what not. swappable or component means? We don't know <laughs> that. And because of that, their target demographic is obscured. Swappable components, how does that affect my KD? Oh, speaking <laughs> of KD, thank you. I almost forgot to mention this on the oh, story. Shit. Quick oh. sub story. Uh, so, uh, Activision Blizzard, biggest pieces of shit, hate Hong Kong and all that stuff, right? So, with mm-hmm. that being the case, we already know they've been really corrupt on that side. It's why I don't really play Overwatch or fucking Diablo anymore, or I not kind of, I don't. Uh, and then on the Activision side of things, never give a fuck about Activision stuff, anyways, because. Fucking the last Activision game I cared about was like fucking Tony Hawk, and that hasn't been a proper thing for a while. <laughs> yeah. So you have you know Call of Duty already always full of microtransactions. You know they took Modern Warfare Two, remastered it, added microtransactions to a remaster mm-hmm. of a classic game. Just all sorts of scummy shit. Well, they really, really decided to go ahead and pull out the stops on this one because what they did is. So, in most video games you play, you usually have a stat tracker, right? Yeah. You're, how many times did you die? How many times did you blah, blah, blah? That's been extracted mm-hmm. out of Call of Duty in the latest one, and it is now a $20 DLC to keep track of all your statistics and your, your, your pro stats. Uh, so, they what? have a stat tracking uh, DLC now for Call of Duty. Uh, 20 bucks. So, now you can keep track of your KD and all your other stuff you just kept track of before. Uh, being what? taken out wholesale and sold back to you. So, that's a thing. That's 
so gross. It's just, they're just so shameless about it now. It's just, oh, it's just yeah. insane how companies like Bethesda, and the sad thing, Activision's always been shitty, but Bethesda was at least somewhat to the point where I actually liked Bethesda. But a lot of these companies are just getting to this, like, disgusting point where they really are just trying to see how much they can get away with. Like, with monetization, loot boxes sure. and everything, they are just getting to the point where it is actually disgusting yeah. and ridiculous how much they're getting away with. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. absurd. So, uh, random breaking story there. That did happen. That wasn't... Was uh, that did come up yeah, on the side there. But what I was going to say is, Xbox is kind of in murky water with their uh, target demographic. Uh, Microsoft, multi-billion dollar corporation. The yeah. company itself isn't going anywhere, but... The game division is always in a place where they have always eventually really? lost the PlayStation. The 360 was their strongest bout, um, where they led the race for a while. But even by the end of the life cycle, the PS3 still overtook them. Mm-hmm. So they've always been in the PlayStation shadow. So it's always been interesting to see them try different tech and introduce new things, mm-hmm. for better or worse. But now mm-hmm. with this new middle ground, again, they question mark on their demographic. PlayStation is going more the traditional route of we're going to make games. It's going to be a game system. Not really going to do much else, but play your, you know, your Blu-rays. You can stream on it. That's about it. And play your video games. But they've (laughs) always kept the gamer in mind when marketing and making certain decisions like um, stamping exclusives or having games to play that aren't just third-party titles. I just was a little redundant Mm -hmm. there, but my whole point being is the fact that there's always more, uh, what we, people would consider more games, maybe not just by sheer numbers, but as far as good and playable games on PlayStation over Xbox. It's just statistically what it is, especially if you go pound for pound right. with like your Horizon Zero Dawn, Until Dawn, <laughs> why did I go with two Dawns, Persona 5, <laughs> um, Bloodborne. Uh, Bloodborne, Death Stranding, you can go with a list on it's that, really right? It's really just because, doesn't... Does Japan ever give a shit about the Xbox? No. no. And there's a really good right. video really. that they had some uh, really weird exclusives though. Metal Wolf Chaos for, like, was one of them. Yeah, for Xbox mm-hmm. and 360, they had like really weird exclusives that were Japanese only. But more right. often, yeah, the, they really didn't care that much for Xbox. It, it was always no. The, the Xbox please tanks hard over there. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft <clears> has <throat> tried, tried, and tried again when the uh, console initially launched. They put so much money, arguably more money, into Japanese marketing because they always knew it was going to work in the West. Like they so had that Guilty Gear when game origi- Yeah, they tried very hard to get a few IPs that would appeal to the Japanese audience, and they spent mm-hmm. tons of money promoting it at the conventions over there, TGS and whatnot. Um, the thing mm-hmm. is, Xbox does not know how to market to the Eastern audience. Uh, they did their their whole thing with like booth babes wearing like weird sexy stuff and giving out pens and shit like that just didn't work mm. in the market i exaggerate with pens but it was some sort of weird <laughs> they're more with the east to the western audience where you can win someone over to play the game just by giving out a free goddamn t-shirt yeah. but over there you gotta right. kind of like prove a little bit more about what this actually could you explain to me mr japanese man what this game's about dude big old x and a green thing on your shirt wear it uh, yeah, but this game though, like, what is what is a what is, fusion what is frenzy? Mm-hmm. What is a Halo? <laughs> ah, yeah, I know, right? But check it out, check out this chick. Pretty short skirt, huh? You like American girls? <laughs> and it's just like, dude, who the fuck so is this guy? Like, anyways, but so, anyways, the marketing failed there. They tried again with the 360 to mm-hmm. pour a lot of money into trying to market it into the. Uh, Japanese audience, it failed hard. Uh, at least with the Xbox One, they tried again, but they kind of knew, so they didn't try that hard this mm. time with the marketing and everything. They were just like, hey, Japan, you you, you want an Xbox One? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> and then they kind of just gave up that fast this time instead of like really being um, like full assault on it. But... Um, Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with this next one. But again, PlayStation, universally, they have... The reason their numbers are so bolstered is because they do have Japan, which is a huge gaming Mm -hmm. uh, country. Uh, Their support really does tip all the differences. It's why the Switch... uh, For those who don't know, Japan is a big handheld gaming (laughs) country. They love it. That and arcades. Here in the West... 
Uh, handhelds and arcades, especially arcades, are pretty much a non-factor. No one really goes out to go to arcades anymore. Um, that's why you don't see that many, and when you do, they're really homebrew or not so, like, fancy. Unlike the ones in Akihabara and stuff like that, where they're just, like, these, like, multi-level, mm -hmm. huge buildings full of arcades that people literally spent all their money and time at. Uh, and then handheld gaming, especially. That was actually a huge poll where, um, the average Japanese, uh, gamer was like, yo, no, handheld all the way because I'm fucking busy, mm -hmm. I work six days or, or sometimes seven days a week, or I go to school all the time and I got all this bullshit. I love handheld. So they're a huge, um, handheld, uh, country. It's why the 3DS did crazy numbers. It's why the Switch, despite being two years old, have already, like, outsold its other two brethren and stuff like that. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. It's the top selling console right now because almost entirely because of Japan plus everybody else. Um, right. So, yeah. So, PlayStation always just, it's a console that plays games, nice and simple. Xbox has always tried to, like, see what else they can glue to it um, in terms of support. Like, the HD DVD drive attachment that they tried oh, to push geez. for the 360 yeah. back when <laughs> HD DVD was yeah, a thing. that was bad. They... Tried. And again, Xbox is always that company that tried because they had had some decent ideas. I mean, even those Razer Pro controllers that came out, the Kaiju Tournament or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. they call them, controllers that came out for the PS4 were just Xbox control, Xbox One controllers yeah. that yeah. had PlayStation compatibility, basically. Like, when you look at it, you see that shit, you're just like, that's just an Xbox controller. Mm -hmm. um, and ergonomically, I would say... For long, long periods, I really do like the way Xbox's controllers feel. They definitely know how to make a controller. Um, their hard thing is, they're a game console, and that is where they have the hardest time. They don't know how to read the gaming market. They're always releasing these tech-filled things, like the Xbox One X was, in that generation, the most powerful, specs-wise, mm -hmm. video game console. But then the only game that came out for it was, like, Super Lucky Tale at first. That was really compatible with it. Um, which, yeah. for those who don't know, was, like, some really not great... Like, it's an okay, like, little platform with a little fox. Yeah, if you don't um, have the software, you're not going to get... Exactly. Like you can game. have the most souped-up PC on the earth, but if all mm. you want to play is games from the Epic Games Store, you're going to have a very limited scope on what you can mm. try out. Um, not to mention... They are almost one-trick ponies with their exclusives. Other than Forza, Gears of War and Halo were both just gun games. If you're not into that, third-person shooter, first-person shooter. You know, and then hello, it's me. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I've never liked the Xbox. Right, exactly, yeah. and it's just one of those things where they, you know, yes, you have the other third-party games, but that's when the argument comes in, right? I could have my PlayStation where I can play those same third-party games. But I also yeah. have Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona, uh, fucking um, Death Stranding, all this, uh, Bloodborne, all this stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. Plus yeah. those same third-party games. Okay, where are you standing at? Well, uh, <laughs> and that almost seems to be where they're at. I mean, I really do give Phil Spencer kudos for never freezing like that on stage when there really isn't much to say because he's not yeah. given much ammunition. Um all of this was just a big opening to say, uh, do you, and it's going to be interesting because we have three people who really aren't big into Xbox and one person that is, <laughs> but trying to stay, trying <laughs> to stay as objective as possible, how mm -hmm. do you see the Xbox yourself on a personal level, and do you think Microsoft will continue to be in the game for much longer, realistically, again, objectively, uh, be in the industry for much longer, or maybe just kind of start stepping back and helping with, like, net coding or designing controllers and becoming maybe still part of the game industry, but helping Nintendo and PlayStation maybe as um, a controller developer or R&D guys and maybe eventually pull out of the game race because their consoles just are... They're doing decent numbers, but they just always pale big time, you know, at one point PS4 was like 4 to 1. Like, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, we'll kind of go in that way at first. We'll do Mallory last, so we have the sympathizer at the end. But, uh, Solo, what is, you, between you and your friends, what has your perception and, uh, or experience, if any, been with the Xbox kind of, like, going on, you know, in, in your time as a gamer? Uh, so we had, 
a 360, and we had an Xbox. I think even when I left home, we had an Xbox One, but for me, and like my entire experience, the only people who like really played the Xbox were people who like shooters, which is totally fair. It's a, it's a, a valid genre. Mm-hmm. But it's like you said, I can, the only thing that the Xbox gives me that the PlayStation doesn't is like the exclusive shooters. Right, which PlayStation, obviously... I can play everything and I'm missing out on the shooters, which doesn't bother me. Right. But I even, I don't, I don't know. I can maybe see what you're saying about the Xbox fizzling out because even, most of those games you can play for the PC, yep. which it is seems like a Microsoft getting... product probably anyway. Absolutely, right? yeah. It seems like they're getting ready for it almost, it seems like, because their yeah. controllers are always compa- you know, are compatible with PC, and most, and, mm-hmm. and most people and most games actually acquiesce to the Xbox being the standard for their programming. When it has con- con- controller compatibility on most PC games, it uses the mm-hmm. Xbox diagram, not the PlayStation diagram when you sync your controllers yeah. to it. Um, yeah. And then on top of that, the fact that you can now play Forza, Halo, Gears of War, and all that stuff on PC at the moment as well, it almost seems like maybe it is going to become PC franchises. And, and I think you're absolutely right, exactly. Very observant for you to notice that. But yeah, it almost seems like they're kind of like cautious of that. Like they kind of, I think they're almost aware of it too in a way. Yeah. I definitely don't think, uh, I think that they'll hold on for a little bit longer, but if they're doing what you're saying that they're doing and they're trying to make cross-platforming such a big thing, which is really smart, yeah. but uh, it kind of seems like they know. They know. They're like, eh. The Xbox will stick around for those of you who like it, but... Yeah, exactly. It's like how many will stick on, and that's not even like a jab. That's just an honest thing. You know, eventually people will start to be won over by the other ones, especially if they start to build these massive libraries that really make you question why you should get an Xbox, right? And again, yeah, Xbox is playing nice with everybody as much as possible. They've really been trying to play nice with PlayStation as much as possible. Mortal Kombat 11 dropping a big update where now you can cross-play Xbox and PlayStation together. Yeah. PlayStation's usually the one who's really wary about that, which is weird because I, we, we've always tried to discuss this and dis- find out what it is exactly PlayStation is so scared of with cross-play, other than the fact that objectively <laughs> they have the worst net coding. But that's the thing is that mm. um, Xbox has tried to play nice. You know, they have a big partnership with uh, Nintendo. You know, they let them use Banjo, which is their franchise now since they acquired Rare in Smash. Uh, mm-hmm. They also have offered to have Xbox Live uh, and their server net coding mm-hmm. on certain Nintendo online games because they know that they know how to do the internet stuff's way better than Nintendo does. That's always been Nintendo's biggest thorn in its side is they yeah. don't know how to do online play for sh- The fact that we have to share friend codes, <laughs> the end of that yeah. story, you know? Jesus, uh, unfortunately, yeah. I love Nintendo to death, but they're so slow in that area of tech. Um, for sure. And then, you know, but yeah, so you have Xbox playing nice with everybody and then crossing over to the PC. To me, it just really seems like they're pre-ordering their grave. Their mm-hmm. grave is still a bit away, but they're going ahead and customizing it and, and, and adding a couple of mm-hmm. hard drives to that, that grave, so that way it looks at least a little badass when it eventually they have to get in it. You know what I mean? And uh, there's that. But, Mr. Josh? Uh, I mean, I think the the big nail in the coffin for the Xbox was when they decided to have it so that if you buy it digitally, you get it on Xbox and PC. Yep, the buy one, get one. Yeah, because even though it's kind of neat, but it just eliminates the point of having the console in the first place, especially yeah. if you're already on PC. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it, it kind of sounds like what they're doing is pretty much the Steam box, and I what I would predict is this is going to be like PC, like super entry-level PC gaming, mm-hmm. and then eventually it'll just kind of fade away where it's like its own mini PC. Or yeah, not- basically the Xbox will still be called an Xbox, but it's basically going to just be a PC. Yeah. They're going, the, the yeah. console, as a console itself will cease to exist, but the name Xbox will probably still exist, and mm-hmm. it's now this thing. In fact, very good point, one could even see the, the way it's described and everything, this Xbox Series X could be seen as the first of that step of it not really being an Xbox anymore. Yeah. Because it basically, as many headlines called it, and as I've read from the spec sheet, is just a starter PC, basically. A pretty decent starter PC at that. Yeah. So. so, pretty hmm. much. Yeah, I think it'll just kind of fade away. I think they'll probably still make games, but hmm. 
it'll just be for that and you know windows um i do hope they'll still try to do some innovation because they they do things that are pretty cool like the uh that accessible controller they made right the one you can customize if you have disabilities yeah, or whatever like, like that with that the was, paddles yeah. Yeah. that way if you're yeah exactly there was like, that kid who had like uh, i don't know if he had polio or whatever but it was an issue where he was obviously missing a few appendages, but mm-hmm. with the addition of the little pedal, then the big button, then this and that, yeah. he was able to play, you know, some games that would have really been out of access if you were to hand him a PlayStation controller, which he literally couldn't hold. Um, like, stuff like that. So, exactly, they have those innovations. Yeah. The fact that they have remained backwards compatibility all the way back to OG Xbox mm-hmm. with discs, mm. pretty interesting. Uh, PlayStation 5 announcing um, backwards compatibility, but I always tell people put a bunch of asterisks <laughs> next to that because there is a lot of caveats. They've already yeah. said that it's going to be a very limited, at least at first, maybe they'll add more like what Xbox did, but a very limited at first. So uh, I wouldn't say Take sell that. your PS4 yet to pre-order a PS5. Yeah. Maybe stick with that PS4 for a little bit longer. Um, I but... still got my fucking PS2 because I'm like... The fact that I can't be backwards compatible pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, it's not great, which sucks because up to the PS3, they try they yeah. did a weird one. It was always backwards compatible with PS1 yeah. because PS2 could do PS1 and then PS3 uh-huh. could do PS1 at least at first when it was the big fat one. But PS2 was never ever reached out to again and then PS3 isn't backwards compatible with PS4, mm-hmm. which Sucks because especially when a console first launches, I feel that's the most imperative period that something should be backwards compatible. Yeah. Because when a new gen's out, you should be able to use your old console, get a little bit of cash, especially with how expensive some of these consoles are going, especially with, again, what I project, uh, 600 bucks. You're going to want to probably yeah. get a little bit of padding towards that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but there's that. Oh, and then uh, other than that, Josh, uh, your what was your personal experience with Xbox in your history of gaming, like, to the oh. point of, like... You know, what you owned or what you experienced and kind of why it's never really appealed to you, well, per se. Well, uh, yeah, so if we're going to go all the way back, I mean, uh, around the time where it was the big uh, trifecta, mm-hmm. uh, the PS2 was what I spent most of my time on. I ended up getting an Xbox towards the end of its lifespan because I wanted to, I really wanted to check out Fable. Mm-hmm. That was pretty much the main reason. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, Fable was good. Um, played Halo, that was fun, but I'm not a huge Halo fan. Right. Um, <clears throat> after that, I did prioritize getting the 360, mainly because the PS3 was a higher price point. Much. Yeah, and then I think the PS3 was weird because the problem with that is PS3 didn't have that many good exclusives. No, PS3 in, fucking sucked. Yeah, in yeah, the first couple of years, the Xbox bad. 360 had a much stronger library. It yeah. was towards, yeah. it was the second half to the end that PS3 blew up all of a sudden and took over. But yeah. in the beginning, yeah. Xbox 360, yeah, most people I know who owned at least an Xbox, all of us, I, I think high school had converted to Xbox yeah. at that point, mm-hmm. 360 at that point. So. Yeah, because I remember I wanted the PS3 because I was still like, a huge Final Fantasy fan, so... Mm-hmm. The plan was 13 was going to be PS3 exclusive. Right. But then the moment they said, oh, no, we're going to have it on 360, you're going to have three discs. And I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, it didn't matter. So I played that. Um, So, yeah. And then with... uh, I, I think I was planning on getting the Xbox One because I was already with 360, but then Bloodborne happened. And you were just like, PS4, PS4, yeah. PS4. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, no, prioritizing this. But I, I, I remember I still had plans to get the Xbox One because of uh, Scalebound. Yeah, Rip Scalebound was piece. also what, what, yeah, Scalebound was also what hooked me in, and now it's super dead. And yeah. it might come out on Switch, so let's hope. Yeah. There's still really no news on that ever since those rumors sparked. Like almost a year ago. Yeah. So but, yeah. I mean, pretty much the main thing that drove me to a console was the software. Yeah. So, so. and that's the thing; it can even make you convert sometimes, or convert back in this case, yeah. and that's what happens. All right, Miss Mallory, here we go. You better have your you better have your law and order pants <laughs> you're, on you're, uh, because well, you're very I've been clearly reading, Xbox defense. defense. I've been reading a lot about just the Xbox Series X. Mm. Um, but just my, first my experience with yeah, Xbox. Yeah, why, yeah, why you, in your case, you've been an Xbox person yeah. and why? So the first console other than, like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> no, the first console that was actually mine was an Xbox. Mm-hmm. So I had to share all my other consoles and even our point. handhelds. Like, we had to share at some point. But when we got our first Xbox, I remember um, at first it was a family Xbox, and then it was moved into my room. Mm. And then we bought a second Xbox for the downstairs. So I got to be left alone in my room playing terrible multiplayer (laughs) with all my friends and, like, just listening to people talk shit to me and talking shit back then. Was way worse than it is now. Ah, like, uh, depends on where you go. Well, yeah, God. But, you gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you're playing. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But so I remember just how cool it was that I could sit in my room and put like I had CD players that I had like boom boxes, but I could put my Xbox on and watch that little <laughs> screensaver. Oh, yeah, that thing was cool when you yeah. played disc on while, it. Yeah, <laughs> and while I was sleeping, it was on. Like, my Xbox was like my whole world. Or you could burn your, uh, you could save your music mm-hmm. tracks on there. You could, that yeah, that was pretty then, badass. Save it to the hard drive. Yeah. And the online play wasn't horrendous like it was on PS2. Yeah. yeah. God, the online yeah. play on PS2, with the exception of maybe Final Fantasy XI. That actually worked, but, God, it's like so calm and all that. Yeah. Oh, anyways. And then we got, when Xbox 360 came out, mm-hmm. I remember we we didn't trade in our Xboxes. Mm-hmm. I refused to trade in my Xbox. Nostalgia. Yeah. So we kept them, and mm-hmm. I got my 360, which worked a lot better. I remember we played the PS2, but my my main like gaming station was my Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been with Xbox so, since... So, yeah, I was gonna say, a lot of yours is strong attachment and yeah. memories. Um, and, like, even now, like, I have a gaming PC, mm-hmm. and I play my Xbox games on my gaming PC. Mm. Like... You're a part of the problem! No, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, in my room, I still have my Xbox. There mm-hmm. will probably always be an Xbox something in my room, mm-hmm. no matter what it is. Mm. But so you I, are a ride or die. Yeah, like... There's never been a question. That's what they need. <laughs> yeah. That's what they need. Now I'm one of the... Uh, if I was a Fallout person... Uh, yeah. Um, but what I was reading is, is super interesting mm-hmm. because I do have multi-platform uh, games or con- uh, multi-games that I play on both my Xbox console, my PC. Mm. Now I can play from my phone. Oh, you're talking about xCloud? I have xCloud, but I also have the one where literally you can just, like, I can be at, um, I can be out with you guys at some show and download a game to my, my Xbox, and it's gonna be ready for me when I get home, no matter what. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't have to wait or anything, I just hit a button and it starts the install immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, that's how I've been playing Ori in the, um, Blind Blind Forest. Forest. Is oh, yeah, I don't I play it on my console. Actually, yes. I play it on my PC, and mm-hmm. I actually have a, a whole separate controller for that game. But it's an Xbox controller, um, and just the whole like around Xbox. I love their tech. Mm-hmm. I love the specs they put in, the time they put in to make these consoles. And no, they don't have the exclusives, mm-hmm. but um, you know. I've sat there and played some of the exclusives on mm-hmm. exclusives on PS4, and sometimes they catch my attention. Sometimes yeah, they and that's don't. the thing. It's the taste, right? It's yeah. because obviously you would have been more of a PS person if all those exclusives caught your attention too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just not a big weeaboo. Um, <laughs> now, what I was going to say is uh, that is one thing I've always told people. As I said, you know, the best thing about Xbox fans is no one ever pretends to be an Xbox fan. So you know they're genuine as hell if they're outwards like yeah. admitting they play play they play Xbox. Yeah. I'll give them that. That's a damn sure. But I was I mean I was looking at the tech and I'm looking at like all the stuff they're doing around it. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks really cool. I think Again, they've always been cool yeah. on the tech side. Like I badass. think that they're going more towards like what Steam tried to do. Like mm-hmm. you guys said, the Steam the box. box. Yeah. But they're going <laughs> they're doing it in a better way. Uh, I keep talking about. Oh, I hate you right now. Oh, I hate you so much right now. We can't share what that picture was, but it had something to do with Xbox. And oh my god, um, <laughs> that's gonna be good on the audio medium. But I think yeah. it's gonna be cool because oh eventually, uh, um, so eventually, I think like Xbox is gonna be is gonna do the Steam boxes way better mm-hmm. than than Steam did because yeah, those, Steam definitely those can't sucked. do a controller and they can't do a console. That's um, for sure. 
Yeah, that saddens me because I kind of was watching... excited for that controller at yeah. first. Yeah, that's that was terrible. That's a cool idea. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. Um, I do think that they're going to, because they're already helping each uh, yeah. the other consoles so much. Mm-hmm. That um, you know, I think they're always going to do that, just because they've they've proven that they'll they'll always. I like to play nice. Yeah, um, I think with the PC side, I think it's really cool that they're going more towards a PC side. Mm-hmm. Um, because it would be really cool if instead of an Xbox, I have my Xbox PC tower. Right. Right. And in their case, it doesn't hurt them anymore because Microsoft Windows runs on most PCs mm-hmm. that play games, so. They really do yeah. have like almost a win-win in that sense, in that they're even if they put one department of theirs out of business, it's just going to make another side of things stronger because that's another yeah. com- competitive. Because I, I don't really think Xbox is ever going to go like completely dead. Um, one would like to think um, they won't. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, if they do, I'd probably cry a lot. <laughs> That would be. A, I, honestly, I think that the gaming industry in general, jokes aside, would be like I would be pretty sad. I'd be yeah. like, you know, that is like they held in there a lot better than the ColecoVision or the Dreamcast mm-hmm. or anything like that. I'll be like, mm-hmm. I'll be like, yeah, you guys lasted a long time at least. That's true. Um, but I think they're going more to where it's more accessible for players to play their games. Uh-huh. Um, I really hope that they never like. I don't like the Xbone sad because. I will always want a disc yeah, player. You want this, yeah, yeah. No, no worry. The 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 premium version, but the I, Lockhart or yeah. whatever is gonna. But have. I think yeah. I think that they're gonna they're gonna do like I said the Steam box, but way better, mm-hmm. and it's gonna just be a better console for right. it. You know, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Even though it is a, and I like the interchangeable parts. Like, yeah, again, it's I basically like gonna PC, be a PC. So. so Xbox, the name will always exist, but it just technically isn't a console anymore but hey yeah, eventually if it keeps it alive yeah. um yeah i know and then for those of you who want to play final fantasy 7 remake have an xbox and don't want to get a ps4 don't worry one more year and then you can play final fantasy 7 mm-hmm. remake in march 2021 so that'll be that um and plus not to mention that with final fantasy 7 remake having like infinite parts now at the point that they're going at the at the pace that they're going and the fact that they've now yeah. said it's no longer three parts it's going to be who knows how many parts um, yeah, no, I'm hyped for that. But yeah. yeah. So anyways, the Switch is the best console. Um, <laughs> and that is what we've kind of uh, come to. This is the whole point is just to talk about oh, yeah. that. Okay? Oh, yeah. Now anyways, so we're going to see what's going on. Uh, Nintendo hasn't announced anything. They still are kind of not denying nor confirming the Switch Pro, which a lot of people are waiting on, you know, mm. especially I've gotten a lot of people's heads. So a lot of people have been telling me that they do want to get a Switch because I won't shut the fuck up about it. But... They are kind of also waiting because they do want to see what this pro is of this rumored pro is about, yeah. mm-hmm. and because the same source that rumored the light, which came true, is the same source that rumored the pro. A lot of people are thinking, okay, it probably will be a thing. If I had to guess, um, I think it's probably it's going to be tough because I just can't think. Uh, it's going to probably either do that weird thing where it releases right before the PS5 and the Xbox mm-hmm. Series X. Or it's going to release with. And when you do that, there is no, actually, literally no way that the tech in the Switch Pro is going to be anywhere close to the PS5 or the mm-hmm. Xbox Series X mm-hmm. with all that crazy no tech. Way. Uh, yeah. Solid state drives, 4K, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I get that. But I don't know. It's always been an interesting, uh, there, uh, Nintendo's always been in an interesting state of, They've always been the neutral party where they don't really compete. They've already said we don't compete with PlayStation yeah. X. Like, we don't yeah. see ourselves as rivals per se. Um, we just do Nintendo, and that's why we've been this great success that we have, is we don't pay attention to who's on our left or who's on our right. Mm-hmm. Um, with that being said, though, I would be very curious to see it because uh, my friend Daniel and I, who we're going to have on the podcast, and um, trying to get him on in a, a few episodes from now is in another podcast, but... It's always been a thing where I talked to when the when the Switch first came out and then they announced uh, the Pro uh, rumors uh, a few months ago. I don't know why I said when it first came out. What I meant yeah. is a few months ago when the rumors first came out. Okay. Um, we had a thing where I said that I don't get the point of doing a souped up Switch because the whole idea of the Switch is taking your like what seems like almost impossible games to take with you mm-hmm. on the go. Especially the actual Switch portion, which I've obviously given up converting to the light. But that was the whole idea of the Switch. I was told him, you could argue that the light is technically not in the spirit of the Switch either. But the whole point of... I I just feel like chasing specs 
takes away from the spirit of the mm-hmm. Switch. Mm-hmm. The Switch, I felt mm-hmm. from Inception, didn't seem like a Specs chaser. So to make the super powered one, especially because my prediction of what the Switch Pro will be is that it's going to be. I pointed out my PS4 for those listening to the audio. Obviously. It was very dramatic. It's going to be that. Like the light is something mm-hmm. you cannot dock to a TV, mm-hmm. the Switch Pro is probably going to be some shit you can't even take with you. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be like a full-fledged big old box like this PS4 or Xbox, and that's what it's going to be. I think that that's what the Pro is going to be. It probably mm-hmm. will have better specs than we expect, but it's not going to be a Switch. Yeah. Right. So, we'll see. I'm always open. <clears throat> Whatever gets Nintendo to sell more. Yeah. The Switch Lite, uh, I love how Bowser, the new CEO... Um, <laughs> talked about I can't, that's amazing I love that's that. his actual name <laughs> um, but anyways Bowser the new CEO did mention that the Switch Lite has been nothing but helpful because two things came out of it one well three one it bolstered sales two people were not unlike me I'm one of the few people apparently that did that not converting over in fact the Switch Lite is usually an additional Switch mm-hmm. to most people's ar- you know, arsenal oh interesting but the third thing that they didn't even design for, but they saw um, in increase to it, is the Switch Lite actually brought a huge, almost non-existent female demographic mm-hmm. to the Switch family. Apparently, not too many girls were buying Switches, but when the Switch Lite mm. came out with its cuter form mm-hmm. factor and the popping fashionable colors, not to be stereotypical, but from what they saw in boost of that... They saw a huge jump in a uh, female demographic of buying switches when the light mm-hmm. came out. I think so, that's just because we're closer to getting Animal Crossing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's probably hey, what it uh, is. Can't, cannot fight that. And on that note, that's something we're going to be waiting on. So that's exciting. So excited. All right, Solo. It was I think good with ha- the drop of Pokemon and the drop of Animal Crossing coming, I think that's why they had a yeah. boost in sales. Oh, yeah, that's females. true, too. Great. To be honest, that, that, could be, uh, that definitely probably had a big uh, bump in it as well. Uh, mm. But yeah, no, but it is good to know, though, that uh, the, both the Switch and the, and the Switch Lite are both selling really, really well. So Yeah, good that's stuff. good. All right, Solo, it was awesome having you on. I know we, we, we took a huge chunk of your time because we just had such a good time that just kept running on and on and on, and we do, yeah. we do uh, appreciate you spending time with us, but um, yeah, thanks for coming on. It was a lot of fun, you know, going from uh, yeah. watching your vids and listening to your stuff to actually having you participate in our things, so... Yeah, thanks for having me on. Of course. Hey, you have any future projects, anything like that? You always let us know. We always make spots for our guests to plug stuff. You know, you, you got a new podcast or anything, or you have a new special or anything like that, or con appearance. Always let me know. I will, uh, you know, we always signal boost that on social media, as well as we usually use our ad roll spots, uh, which don't exist right now, uh, for <laughs> uh, plugging guests' stuff. So you're always part of, uh, of uh, the Disconnected Cast family, so we always got you. Cool, thank you. Alrighty, hey, we'll send you our friend codes later, but that's for after the air, but we'll hit you up with that. <laughs> but other than that, you have a good night, and everybody else, have a good morning, because it's the morning. It At is. this point, it's, it's probably totally like morning. past noon now, <laughs> on Monday. Yeah. And speaking of Mondays, you can catch us every Monday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And until the next episode, we will catch you guys then. Until then, see ya. I had to think for a second. I was about to fuck up the time. You were.